This is not some soul's factory. This is long, quiet days with the Father. This is obedience. This is cold, early mornings, tired, rough hands, and hot summer days. This is quality before quantity. This is where you're not just a customer, you're a client. I don't just work for you, but with you. This is where your ideas come to life. I am Joshua Watts. I love what I do and that I'm able to use my skills to serve our Father and you. I look forward to working with you. This is Joshua Watts Leather Company. At Cascadia Cutlery, you'll find the most quality knives you'll ever need. There are few things more frustrating than a dull blade. Buy the best knife you can afford and then actually carry it at CascadiaCutlery.com. If this is true, then our country is in a lot of trouble. We would have these trips, these special trips. But he said, my, my daddy takes the bodies to the grocery store and he grinds them up and puts it in the hamburger. And nobody ever knows it. How can kids six, eight, 10 years old be describing rituals that come from a book like the like the book of the dead it's hard to get your mind around people being capable of this kind of evil this is Dan Badandi of TruthRadioShow.com. I am honored to offer my listeners a one-month free subscription to NYSTV.org. Subscribers will have access to thousands of nice TV videos from spiritual warfare to biblical and occultic topics, banned from YouTube videos, and much more. Subscribe today on NYSTV.org and use the promo code DANTHEMAN and receive your first month free. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Dan Bedani Show, a spiritual warfare Friday. So, first of all, I want to make sure we're broadcasting fine, which we are on Rumble. So, usually we'll broadcast on YouTube on our Friday shows, but I got suspended. I was a bad boy again. <laughs> so, dare I talk about the vaccines and everything else. So, anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the symbolic language of the occult. Uh, awesome show we're going to have today, and I guess uh, Trey Harris is going to be joining us. He's the host of Course Correction Radio, and I think he, here we go, one second. Think we knocked you out there, uh, Trey? So yeah, I just saw, that. I just <laughs> saw that. <laughs> I was wondering what happened. I was like, oh no, what did I touch? <laughs> So, folks, this is uh, Trey Harris. He's a host of CourseCorrectionRadio.com. So, we got an awesome show for you tonight. I got your slides when you're ready, man. And uh, so, give an introduction to yourself. You've been on here several times and several more times to come. Uh, so, uh, give an introduction if you want, and um, you know, let people know the you know the meaning of why we're going to be talking about this tonight. Um, well, like Dan said, my name is Trey Harris. If you haven't seen me before, um, I do host a weekly show. 
over on the Course Correction Radio YouTube channel. And as far as why we're talk, what we're talking about is important. Um, I've seen, you can find several videos. There's even been probably been a couple that me and Dan have talked about where, you know, people will talk about symbols and we're going to talk about what they mean and things like that. But I think one aspect that people miss is how the fallen kingdom is using these to not only desensitize people, but in a, they're using these symbols in mass hypnosis, if you will. They're, they're, lulling the people to sleep through things like comic books, movies, and even, um, you know, signs for stores and logos for businesses. It's, it's insane. Yeah, right in our faces, guys. So before we get any further, guys, I want to quickly thank uh, BeforeIt'sNews.com for carrying the show. And also, on behalf of both me and Trey Harris, uh, we want to thank Shake and Wake Radio. Thank you, Annie, so much. ShakeandWakeRadio.com for carrying both of our shows on that awesome, amazing network, guys. So if you have never tried them, uh, go to ShakeandWakeRadio.com when you can. It's all audio. They carry uh, me and Trey's show. They carry the shows from NYC TV and a bunch of awesome uh, Christian uh, truth radios, you know what I mean? Truth shows, I'm sorry. Awesome stuff, man. And uh, so, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome show, man. I really do think it's going to be. So we're going to go off the cuff today because usually we talk about deep, you would get the deep biblical stuff, deep occultic stuff, which you don't get any more deeper than this with the sim- uh, the, the symbols. So Trey's got some stuff to talk about, uh, like what they're doing in the movies, how they just throw the stuff right in your face. And uh, yeah, also too, the common things you buy every day. And you know, I want to uh, point out too, because I got a lot of criti- uh, criticism over this. Um, years ago, I did a video showing the Monster Energy drinks and the uh, Red Bulls. We're not saying it's evil to drink these things. Uh, not at all. So I want to point that out. The stuff we're going to show you, we're not saying it's evil to use Apple computers, evil to, because uh, we all be hypocrites. I mean, I got an Apple iPhone, he's on an Apple computer, you know what I mean, whatever. But we're going to show you these things that they use on everyday common things Uh and we could be here all night. We got we um, we got some stuff, but if we showed you everything, we'd be here for hours on end, not easily. You know what I mean? But uh, we, we we're gonna show you here tonight. It's basically um symbol symbolism. You know what I mean? So um, basically, what a symbol is, and uh, symbol is uh, meant to portray uh, portray. I'm sorry, can't even talk today. Portray a symbol, uh, a meaning to it. So in other words, the public gets an exo- exoteric version. There's thousands of different versions, but they're all false. And the true esoteric meaning is one or two, you know, f- real meanings of the symbol. And a symbol is meant to tell a story uh, or a whole, uh, you know, a, to portray some kind of a message that only certain people can see. So a symbol uh, conceals to those who can't see, which is the ordinary everyday person, and it reveals to those who can see. You know what I mean? And it goes back to the scriptures. Let me uh, get that verse up real quick because um, I had it. At the end of my uh, slides here, but I want to actually uh, this verse because they're going to portray to to what we're going to be talking about today. You know what I mean? And the cool thing is, if you go to Matthew thirteen fifteen and seventeen, it says, "For this people's heart is wax gross, and ears uh, are dull of hearing, and their eyes have lids have closed, unless any uh, time that they see with their eyes." And hear with the ears, and should understand with this heart, and should be converted, and shall I heal them? And it says, "But be blessed." He's talking, you know, this is our Savior. He's telling us, "Be blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears can hear." For verily I say to you, the many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see, and have not seen them, and those things that uh, which hear, but you uh, could not hear them, you know what I mean? Then Matthew 13, 16, 17, you know, which is uh, the same, yeah, okay. Nope, uh, yeah, it goes on, it says, but be blessed for your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. So, basically, he's talking about, um, like, a divine wisdom, so to speak, uh, something, you know, in that not every prophet is going to hear and see, and you know, no, it's to see things how God sees them. You know, not in mountain days, we got the, you know, the vast uh, uh, explosion of information and everything else, stuff we could dig up on the internet. Years ago, we had to go to a library. 
scour through hundreds of books, and they, even if the libraries even have these books, sometimes you have to go to a store or uh, you know order special cultic books that I don't recommend people doing, but to learn this information, you know what I mean. And uh, so, uh, we, me and Trey both we like David Carrico, we collect books, you know what I mean. So uh, we got books on the stuff, you know what I mean, and uh, exposing these uh, symbols and all that. So, and, you know, the thing is too, it's awesome to know the stuff now because. Uh, that's what Jesus is talking about. You know, those prophets, a lot of those prophets back then, they can see some of the stuff or hear it. We get to see and hear it, which I'm very blessed to be able to do that, to disseminate out to you people out there uh, the occultic language. Because the thing is, the Bible says, and before we go any further too, the Bible says to know your enemy and expose it. You know what I mean? We're not to, yeah, we don't turn an itch and ear to it. In other words, we don't seek these things for wisdom. But there's nothing wrong with somebody strongly in the faith with a good anchor under the Lord. To dabble into these, not dabble, I should say, uh, I'm sorry, to look into these things, to study your enemy. Because you can't go into battle unless you know uh, have any reconnaissance of your enemy. So that's what we do. And again, I recommend and you know the average person not to do that. Because if you look into the abyss, you can easily become part of that abyss. Easily. I've seen a lot of people do that. You know what I mean? You need a sp strong spiritual anchor in the word of God. And your faith in the word of God. Because that abyss is so deep and cruddy, man. And I tell you, you got sucked in like no tomorrow. And without that spiritual link, I don't care who you think you are. You will get sucked into that uh, pit, that abyss, uh, real quick. And uh, so this stuff goes evil. And, uh, and uh, Trey, if you want to start off, um, uh, you, know, you, want to do a, you want me to do a prayer for us uh, to start off? I think oh, but we lost your audio. I think you're on mute. Yep. Oh, there um, you go. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, All right. I did not catch the part if you wanted me to do that or if you wanted to do that. Oh, it's up so to I'll, you. I could do it if you want. It's up to you. I mean, your call. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll go ahead, Father. If I, right. first, first of all, thank you for letting us be able to meet tonight and expose the kingdom of darkness for what it is. And it's a bunch of sniveling cowards hmm. who are so ashamed deep down of what they actually believe that they will hide it in fear from the general public father and we just thank you for the boldness that you have put in us through the holy spirit to be able to uh confront these matters and be able to shine a light on them and that light of course being the gospel of jesus christ father and we just ask that um that you will have your mighty hand on us tonight father that we may um we may rebuke the prince of the power of the air and his minions, Father, and send them fleeing in terror as we expose their kingdom. Um, be with Dan and myself both. Um, give us the wisdom to be able to accurately give this information, Father, according to your will. And we pray this, of course, in Jesus' name. Amen. No one add on to that. And uh, Father, please protect everybody because when you get when we look into the abyss we need divine protection we need a spiritual anchor so i'm asking you to do that for folks out there who might be watching us that don't know you that don't know um you know have the faith in you so i ask you to protect them as well because uh, we're here to disseminate you know and expose evil you know so i ask you in your name and not only for them but for all of us you know what i mean just anybody that's watching this pro program yeah to uh bless them and protect them from any and all evil especially from the incantations and uh the curses and hexes and everything else that go along with these symbols in your precious name amen amen all right, brother. So, uh, yeah, uh, I know you got some stuff up too. So, I got some stuff too. So, about you know, it's about you. You're the you're the guest here. So, we'll run through some of your stuff, and uh, then you know, when you need a break, let me know. I got a couple uh, slides I want to show, showing some um, you know what symbols mean too. So, uh, so do you want to kick it off here? You know, show you show the, uh, your screenshots here. I got yeah, your that'd be ready. great. So, and as you saw, you know, I just for my own organizational. Um, you know, reasons I titled it symbols, Earth's esoteric language, because that's what symbols are. Symbols are a universal language. Think of it as the cheat codes that people used to bypass the language barrier given at the Tower of Babel, because no anybody, regardless of the language they speak, if they are an adept into the mysteries, they can look at the symbol and know exactly what the person is trying to say, even if they're from the other side of the earth. Um, and of course, that's what we 
we want to expose. And, you know, there's nothing. Oh, like a, 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 sorry, cut you off. like a stop sign. Everybody knows, like, it, you know, no matter what language it is, it's a stop sign. You, you come to a stop, you know, <laughs> so universal things like that. Right? Absolutely. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, it's like you said in the verses you mentioned, parables, Jesus, the reason Jesus spoke in parables was to keep those who had been, you know, basically told after they had blasphemed the Holy Ghost, they were no longer permitted to know the secrets of heaven. And so Jesus came up with these parables where he spoke in symbolic language. So that way only those who had eyes to see and ears to hear could see it. These symbols we're going to be going through are Satan's perversion and twisting of that language, if you will. And um, if you want to go ahead and pull up the slide All set, brother. for um, the ones that says the signs and symbols rule the world, not words nor yep. laws. I mean, because you can just look through this and I was astounded the first time I saw this because, of course, that's Gmail. And then it's the Masonic Royal uh, Rich Apron. Uh, I thought the Facebook one was fascinating with the Masonic Tuple Cane sign. I mean, just take a look at look at look at this stuff, and it is astounding how everything is right there in front of us. But if if you've never seen it, or you don't know what these symbols are, you'll never see them ever. Mm -hmm. And that's the way they want it. It's they amazing. want you lulled to sleep so you don't know what it is. And Tubu Cain guidance means another cane. Uh, who's like a relative direct descendant or something like that. And I think uh, it was rumored that he survived the flood. He was one of the people that survived the flood. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate or not, whatever. But it's always uh, two, a cane and two balls. <laughs> you know, what I mean? a two ball cane. Yeah. You know what now, I mean? Now, what you said about him surviving the flood, if you watch Darren Aronofsky's Noah movie, Mm -hmm. They actually replace him for Og of Bashan on the Ark. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, there there is that there. Which, of course, I think the reason they did that is because it is a nod to their Masonic ancestor, if you will. Yeah. Is exactly what it was. Now, when you look at Tubal Cain in the Bible, he is the first polygamist ever mentioned. He is the first one to take two wives. Um... And he was also the one who invoked the curse of Cain upon himself in the Bible. He said, you know, if Cain was avenged sevenfold, let Tubal Cain be avenged seven, you know, times mm. seven or 70 times sevenfold, which is interesting because that's mirror language of what Jesus said. Yeah. When Jesus said, you forgive seven times 70. So, um, which just goes again to show you that that's what this is. It is a. It is a mirror. It is a perversion of what is right and proper biblically. So, and then of course, there's the Apple App Store or the Android, the Android product store. That tells you how dated this is, because both of those have changed. Yeah. But to the, for the most part, Apple, at least, is still a modified Square and Compass. Now. You remember that picture that I sent you a few weeks ago of the convenience store? Yeah. Uh, near where I work? Yep. I've got that right there. I don't know if anybody, everybody can see it. Yep. But AJ this is Mark. a convenience store that is, uh, <laughs> you know, I pass it literally four or five times a week. Now, I also took a screenshot of this just because, you know, the naysayers, I, and I get it, you know, people are going to be like, well, I see that A, and I see a square and compass. And I know you said the same thing when I sent it over to you. Yeah. But what I don't think people are going to realize, some, the skeptic is, of course, going to say, well, there's no way that you can know. This is, and I Googled it. There, I told you there's a Masonic Lodge, mm -hmm. five minutes walk from there. Google mapped it. It's actually a six-minute walk. There's the screenshot. <laughs> That's, That's how close they are. Wow. Um, and that particular lodge is also a meeting place for the Order of the Eastern Star. So, Interesting. Which Wilson at one point, Wilson is the town, Wilson, North Carolina at one point had, um, I think, up to five Masonic lodges. There are still three I know of that are in operation. Wow. 
One that, is in my mom's backyard. Wow. That tells you there's a lot of members for five yep. lodges. <laughs> yeah. And like, so I can go ahead and tell you the sheriff of the town is in the lodge. The, the head judge is in the lodge. All the lawyers are in the lodge together. Majority wow. of the deputies. So who owns that town? <laughs> Masonic one town, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there are stories that I promised I would not go into on the air because I know, let's just put it this way, I know way too much of the underbelly of that town. But when you work in the kind of work I do, you learn things. Yeah. And it is, it would make Gotham City blush. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, speaking so, of Gotham City, man, and you look at these symbols, man, and uh, they're in movies and everything. Like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you know, you can keep going on that. There's Google Play and the Seal of Satan. Yep. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know much about the Seal of Satan, but I found it fascinating that it looks just like the Google Play symbol. Yeah. Which, by the way, is what replaced the Android product store. Yep. Um, and then, of course, the Google GPS has changed. They've modified this a little bit, but it's virtually still the same symbol. They just concealed it more. Yeah. In other words, we're, we got an eye on you. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same with the Gmail. They've modified that since, too. Yep. Now, my tablet, because my tablet is so old, I still have the original Gmail logo on there. <laughs> but, yeah, this is just some of that stuff. And then, of course, you can go right to the immediate slide after that. And I think everybody who is, you know, still connected to the world through the Internet mm -hmm. knows who this is and of course it's dr stephen strange from the marvel universe the sorcerer supreme of the marvel universe that tells you anything but here's what i want to focus on i specifically chose this picture because of the magic circle that he's casting wow <laughs> and this is where i'm going to kind of break down some of this stuff because people may not realize what some of this stuff means but of course if you can see that in there there's, you know, forget all the fancy writing. All of that means something. That's not what we're interested in today. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you just by looking, and I'm going to show you how I can do it because I don't want you to take my word for it. But just looking at that octogram, I can go ahead and tell you that that is the symbol of the androgynous God yep. of the uh, mystery religions. And there's another slide after this. You can see that same octogram. And this is on a Christian podcast. Right on the wall, yeah. Yep, and look, I, I, I don't think this guy knows because people have brought it up before. They're like, you know, why do you have this star in the background? Um, You know, people just, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt because I can't judge their heart. But it's still a problem. You need to, we need to try to use discernment before we put symbols up. Mm -hmm. We need to kind of understand because, you know, it's like, when people ask me about things, is this harmful or so-and-so? doesn't matter what you believe or what I believe about these symbols. These fallen creatures, they flock to this stuff. This is their language. You are literally marking your territory with their symbol, and you're mm -hmm. drawing them in. You are giving them an anchor point, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's exactly what you're doing, See, especially when you look at the demonic, because we know through what Jesus said that the demonic, they, they roam the earth in hunger and thirst looking for a host, right? Mm -hmm. This so much easier for them to have a host if you give them an anchor point mm -hmm. that was set up by their parents. Because for those of you guys who may be watching this and are new and have never read the book of Enoch— the demons are not fallen angels, but rather are the disembodied spirits of the children of the fallen angels, which, of course, are the Nephilim. And me and Dan, we're already setting up a sequel for this. We're going to go into why the, the, the Nephilim have to be the children of the fallen angels hmm. on another show. But, um, yeah, you know, this is, this is what they are. They're disembodied spirits longing for a host. Now, um, do you mind going ahead and flipping over? Sure. To uh, those magic circles, the yep. diagram of those. The hexagon, hexagram. And... Yeah. So, because if you notice at the top, this is, these are symbols and their meanings from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Alistair Crowley. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, 
think about it like this. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is literally the modern uh, society that carries out the traditions of Rosicrucianism. So they're known as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in Europe, but over here they're known as the uh, Alpha and Omega School of Mysteries. Um, I know this because I am actually subscribed to them on YouTube because they they have a YouTube channel. The uh, Ordo Templi Orientis has a YouTube channel. Like these guys are out there, and I think it's important for us as believers to know that because. They're using. They're going to use the same methods we are in this age of technology to reach their disciples, and it's very important that we know, in my opinion, anyway, we know what they're doing, so we can counteract it with the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just want to give a brief history of how the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and I've talked about this with you behind the scenes before, because mm -hmm. I've told you that I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. And if you watch the original Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law, which I believe it was Guy Ritchie directed it, um, the villain is a stand-in for Aleister Crowley, and the secret society in that movie is actually based off the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn to the point where they had a liaison from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn as kind of an expert to walk them through the symbology in the film. And the plot, generally the plot of that movie, what it was, was the this guy takes over this organization, much like Aleister Crowley tried to do with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. But whereas Crowley failed, this guy succeeds, and he basically tries to usher in the First World War so he can use this society to conquer the world. Why did he do that? Because Aleister Crowley thought he was the B-666. And this is how they are showing the symbolism of that in the movies. They're basically showing the father of their Hollywood religion succeeding in what they would call a parallel dimension, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so, but, you know, that's just a little aside to kind of give you, like, this stuff is there, so you can find it if you know what you're looking for. Um, but if you go down, and I've got a zoomed-in version of the octogram up here. Yep. And I'm just going to read what that says. It says a triad operating in each element in its dual point, i.e. of positive and negative, under the powers of the name of the Tetragrammaton, which is yod heh vav -Hey, Tetragrammaton Adonai, or as it is written, bound together, yod aleph Hey dalit vav nun and I believe it goes on to say, hey, after that, <clears throat> I accidentally cut it off. But um, this is what Albert Pike had to say about that. That's the next slide, right? Yeah, and I've got that up there, too, because I want to show you guys that when I say this is the symbol of the androgynous God, I'm not blowing smoke. You know, you know, this is what they believe. Albert Pike said this, we now read understanding of the bisexual nature of the origin of man. Um, reversing the letters of the ineffable name and dividing it, it becomes bisexual. As the word ya or yud he is and discloses the meaning much of the obscure language of the Kabbalah and is the highest of which the columns Jachin and Boaz are the symbol. Now, of course, Jachin and Boaz, you can see that in really any picture in Masonic literature. They're the pillars um, of the temple that they have misappropriated. Um, you can also see symbolism of things like that in movies like Eyes Wide Shut in the opening scene. And yeah, you just, there's a, I got up on screen, the pillars of Joshua and Boaz. Yep. And so, and I did put the link in the bottom if anybody wants to fact check me on that, because that is actually from a Pike Quotes website. Now, and the reason, and, and, and you know, I want to explain this, why I chose Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange, and I'm going to give a shout out here to, um, to the guys over at, um, oh goodness, now their name is completely blanking me. I hate when this happens. Oh, that happens um, to me. I couldn't remember, uh, like I was uh, introducing you on uh, Wednesday. I was like, we're going to have Trey Harris on. He's the host of, uh, uh, 
And I had to go to, uh, <laughs> I had to pause for me. I'm like, wait, oh, yeah, pause correction dude. radio. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I hate when that happens. But it is, uh, oh, goodness. Man, and I'm subscribed to them. But it's the same guys that did, um, like, they sold their souls for rock and roll. Oh, uh, I forgot his name. Is it Abdulam Films or something? Um, Good Fight Ministries. That's who it is. Oh, okay. Goodness, man. That should not have been that hard. I'm not <laughs> even 30 yet, and I'm already losing my mind. Um, but so, every, and they look, they're doing a great job of showing how, um, you know, Doctor Strange is literally based off of Aleister Crowley and how one of the writers that was really prominent with him was a member of the OTO and things like, like they're doing, they're doing great stuff. You know, I don't agree with them on everything. We have different, you know, eschatology beliefs. We have different beliefs on the nature of, you know, what still is and isn't relevant. Not just minor differences in the scriptures, but these are guys that love Jesus and they're doing the best they can with the information they have. And they are exposing the king of darkness, the kingdom of darkness. And for that, I will give them a shout out. You know, but what they're not focusing on, and there's this one, and if you can go down to the next comic book symbol that I've got, which is the slide right after the Pike one, this Bible. is John Constantine. Now, this is basically DC's answer to the Magic Universe, and you can oh, see that, his, his is a lot more of a prominent symbol. Is John that the one with the demon in the back and the nurse? Do what? Is that with the uh, with the nurse and demon? Yes. Okay. So that demon is actually the demon Etrigan, who is bound to a knight. Get this. Etrigan, in his mythology, is bound to the knight of Camelot, Jason Blood. Now, that's significant because, of course, Camelot is how the Rosicrucians have placed all of their symbolism inside of a, of a story so it could be handed down, right? Hmm. Of course, you know, the Knights of Camelot represent, well, I mean, they represent a lot of stuff. I mean, you could say they're they're literally a mockery of the 12 disciples of Christ, in my opinion. Um, but they could also represent, you know, because there's varying of how many there are. They could represent the 10 kings of the earth. Um, you know, there's there's so much stuff there. But, you know, all of this esoteric symbolism is here in this picture. John Constantine, in my opinion, is more based off of Aleister Crowley than any other magician in comic book history. He is a complete jerk. He's arrogant. He pushes away everybody that he loves, just like uh, Crowley eventually did. He's bisexual, just like Crowley was, even in the bestiality, because there's a hint in one of the DC animated movies that he hooked up with King Shark, who is half man, half shark. Um, just vile stuff. Um, but as you can see with his magic circle, he does the pentagram, which is, of course, the symbol of the horned god or horned goddess, which eventually just goes right back to Lucifer, mm -hmm. just like the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the octogram does. Same thing. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, you can, like, Anybody who's ever familiar with John Constantine's ever read, like, and his comic book, you know, the movie, there was a movie with Keanu Reeves years ago. It was called Constantine. But the comic book is actually called Hellblazer because John Constantine is a guy who has uh, basically, he, he very similar to Doctor Strange. Both of them have sold their souls so many times and made de deals with so many demons that nobody wants to touch them anymore. They're damaged goods. Um, which is, of course, also another allusion to Crowley, who had multiple um, entities appear to him, if you will. So, but, you know, this is just, this is some of the stuff that, you know, kids are into these days. Like, I'll go ahead and tell you, Constantine used to be one of my favorite DC characters of all time, because I was into all of this stuff. You know, I was to the point where I could practice mental magic. I could make you think of numbers that I wanted you to think of. I can make you think of cards that I wanted you to think of. I was into all of this stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I can make a card disappear. I can make a coin disappear. I still do it to this day. My kids love it. <laughs> I don't really see anything wrong with that because it's just sleight of hand, you know? Yeah. 
But when you're getting into that mental magic and you're putting things, you're manipulating people into thinking what you want them to think, that's wrong. Yeah. You're intruding on territory that you have no business intruding on. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, the next one you got, uh, anti Levy Satanic Bible? Yes, because, you know, that is... And what I wanted to show there was just proof that the pentagram was the symbol of the horned god. Yeah, and I want to because point out, too, with that, that... That's the Baphomet that yeah. was drawn by Elias Levi, who was a Catholic priest. I'm not sure if he was a Jesuit. I've heard that. Um, but I know he was definitely Catholic, and he was, you know obviously born a Jew and was into the Kabbalah. He was now, the head of the Knights because... Templar at the time too, right? Do what? He was uh, one uh, whatever that's called. I forgot the, the head of the Knights Templar, like Grand Yeah, Simon he was the Grand Master of the Knights Templar. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that is absolutely true. Now, I have to say this too because I've just, I've just brought up the word Jew, um, which is going to, of course, from naysayers get us flagged. And I have to say this right up front. I don't care where you were born. I don't care what color you are because I guarantee you that if your skin was to get cut and I, my skin was to get cut, we're going to have the same blood in our veins, mm -hmm. especially because we're all believers. We not only have our blood, but we literally have the blood of Jesus Christ that covers us. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Paul even says in Romans, you know, he is not a Jew who is one outwardly. You know, none of that matters. What I want people to realize is because Levi was born into a prominent Jewish family. He was just like Nostradamus and was taught the Kabbalah from an early age and became a very much an adept of it. So, you know, and there's so much. Look, David Carrico has probably done more great work on people like Levi and Crowley and all of this than anybody I know. Yeah. The uh, reason I'm talking about what I'm doing is because I have stacks of comic books this high to this day because I was I was a comic book aficionado. I still, you know, love going through them. Not so much now for the entertainment. I like going through and seeing what I can find in them. For instance, if you go back up to that picture of Constantine, there is a character who is um, Constantine and Batman share something in common. Batman and Constantine have both dated a woman by the name of Zatanna. Now, Zatanna was the daughter of the magician Zatara. And Zatara was known for finding out he had magical powers because he would read things backwards. Now, and that's still to this day how Zatanna and Zatara will do their magical incantations. They'll say words backwards. That is something that was made prominent by Aleister Crowley as well, who would even walk and speak backwards at the same time. Dude was a complete weirdo. <laughs> but these are the things that unless you know about... I remember I grew up watching the Halloween Town movies on Disney Channel. Mm -hmm. Those are some of my favorite movies growing up. But there was a way that you would say a spell. The only way you could reverse the spell was to say it backwards. You know, these are things little subtle things that make it anywhere and if you don't know what you're talking about you know it, it if you don't know what they're talking about it seems harmless until you realize that even these most seemingly harmless things such as saying words backwards can go back to Aleister Crowley and you understand that there's danger in doing things in a reverse order because it is once again a perversion of the way that God set things up God set us up to do things the way we do for a reason. We may not know that reason. I don't know why God chose to make me a, a you know, English-speaking male of the Southern dialect, but he did. And so for me to go around changing the way that that works and saying things backwards and doing all of these weird things, it really what it is is it's a middle finger to God. You're saying, I don't like the way that you set things up. I'm going to do it a different way. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. You know, it's funny, too, because uh, speaking of comic books and everything else, right, you take that symbol, right? And I don't know if everybody's seen the cartoon. I'm sure everybody did Captain Planet. You know what I mean? When uh, the five kids unite their rings together, each one has element to power, 
uh, mm-hmm. earth, wind, fire, water, and uh, what I forgot the other one, but uh, they all put them, the rings together and forms Captain Planet to save the earth and everything else. So those are called elemental uh, elements, okay? And uh, in the witchcraft, there's a reason why there's five points there. Uh, because five points each represents a certain element, and me and uh, Corey in the chat room there, uh, we had a show, and uh, we did uh, also David Carrico covered it too with um, the elemental, the Stoshian spirits, uh, the, the witches, and the people in high levels of the occult. They use these spirits, these elemental spirits, and the Bible talks about these too. Um, the elemental spirits that like really would stick onto people and cause harm to them and everything else, and they think by combining the elements of the earth. Uh, that they could have these super uh, magic powers, or so to speak. And now uh, here's the thing too: people say, "Well, that you know, if you notice the two differences, this one is pointed up, right, and this one's pointing down. There's really no difference. Uh, this one's called an Eastern Star, uh, pointing up, and this is called a Western Star. But the thing is, here's the thing: uh, when in in magic, right, when you join witchcraft, they say we're white people, white magic. We do good things. That's why our star points up because we represent good." Now, the thing is, the people teaching this garbage, it, it, they know it's a lie. It's just indoctrinate good people into, like, Wicca, right? How many good, you know, good-hearted people are in Wicca? You know what I mean? They think they're doing something good. I even told I had something to say, we, we uh, fight demons for God. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I had to laugh at that, but, I mean, they don't. You know what I mean? But they think they do. You know, the good people uh, that get sucked into this, and the people teaching them this, they'll, they'll teach you about the horn, uh, horn god pan of nature and everything else. But in actuality, that up, you know, that one pointing up is actually the people teaching this. They perceive it this way, pointing down Baphomet, not Horn God Pan. What you think is Horn God Pan is actually Baphomet, which is actually Satan. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, and this is uh, and now the, today the uh, the Satanic Church, right? The Church of Satan and a Satanic Temple. They both claim we don't worship uh, Lucifer or Satan. I mean, we don't so uh, we don't even believe in Satan, which is a crock, you know what I mean? They again, it's the same thing. They lure good people in to use so-called atheism and science and all that. But the people running the show, they know, like Anton LaVey, he was a firm believer in Satan. I mean, here's the thing, why would you call yourself a Satanist if you don't believe in Satan? That'd be like me and Trey say, "Hey, we're uh, mean. We're Christians, but we don't believe in Jesus. It's like it's just an oxymoron. You know what I mean? So uh, and don't let people trick you with these symbols. They say, well, you know, because they'll, they'll lure you. Oh no, 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 no. This is the evil one. This is the good one. You know what I mean? There ain't no good one. There's no such thing as white magic. Plain no, and simple. If you and and I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, go but, go for it. Um, I do want to let people know that if you were to watch um, these guys in these movies when they cast these magic circles. Mm-hmm. One thing they always do is they'll have their hands up and one's turning. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, I see that, and that represents them maybe having good intentions starting out, yep. but this stuff corrupts you. Turning this to this, yeah. <clears throat> and they're showing you that because their goal is to corrupt you like you've been corrupted or to corrupt your children or my children. That mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they want. Yeah. That is what they want. There's... I mean, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say this because I don't believe in mincing words. If you are watching this and you think, oh, that's not what they want, then please forgive me for laughing at you because that's what I'm going to do <laughs> yeah. because you're a silly person. And that's the nicest way I can say it is you're just being silly. Hmm. You're being a complete goofball. And my heart actually breaks for you because you don't stand an ice cube chance in hell of overcoming this with that mindset. Absolutely. I agree 100%, man. So, yeah, man. And um, the Satanic Bible. And I, is there a couple symbols you wanted to point out in there, too? What, with the Satanic Bible? Yeah, the one, uh, you know, the Satanic Bible, then uh, the next star. It's a six pointed star. Yeah, so because this is the Seal of Solomon. Um, and what this is, is I actually got this off of a website when I looked up transmutation circles for alchemy, mm-hmm. because this feeds in, when you talk about Captain Planet and you talk about elements, like, so the Wiccan, the Wiccan, uh, religion, religion will use, um, you know, they'll use that same magic circle that Constantine has, and it represents the elements. You can trace this back to Babylon, ancient Japan. I mean, it's worldwide. This is what it means. It's the four elements plus spirit is what it is. Now, when you look at that, that goes back to alchemy as well, because these these elements were used and invoked in alchemy. The theory was, if you read it, is to take base metals and turn it into gold. 
That is not what alchemy is. Alchemy is all about transmutation of the soul. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, when you look at this six-pointed star, this also represents, so we talked about the the eight-pointed star represents the androgyny of their god, right? This, in my opinion, is even more blasphemous because Elifus Levi, in his book Transcendental Magic, wrote about this, and what he said was that this represented the duality of God being both good and evil. He had the white Jehovah and the black Jehovah is what he called it. Now, still, it goes back. It it hints at that androgyny, right? But this is more talking about good nature versus evil nature. And what he basically said was something to the equivalent of, you know, the devil is just God being bad. And I believe it's the way David Carrico likes to put it. And that's what it is. But the reason I wanted to pull that one up is because if you go to the next circle after that, which is very similar, it's a hexagram. But this actually comes from the anime Full Metal Alchemist, which is honestly one of the most popular anime out there right now. Maybe not so much anymore, but back in like the early 2000s and the mid 2000s, it was very popular. It's making a comeback. um, You know what's crazy? Um, I'm sorry to cut you off because I just popped in my head, man. Uh, Remember the the Teletubbies, that wacky, uh, I don't know, whatever the hell you want to call it. It was a kid's show, whatever. The Teletubby show. Oh, yeah. My children are terrified of them. Yeah, it was like I paused it one day, and uh, because it, you know when they do something, and then there's a flash that comes out of the wand or whatever, and it goes 3D into the screen like that. So mm-hmm. one day I paused it, and um, because this right here for some reason just jogged my memory of it, I paused it and it had these symbols just like this within those flashes. Now imagine at a high rate of speed, you know, obviously you can't see it unless you pause it, but your subconscious is picking out. Imagine kids, what? that's why they're like this on the TV, just staring at it like that, because um, they're getting the subliminal popped into the head. Remember the movie The Lone Man? I don't know if you've ever seen that. No, I don't think I ever saw that. Oh, you gotta see it, man, the first one, and uh, basically they take this kid who's mentally challenged, puts him into virtual reality, and um, the doctor does, and he's constantly being just by flashes and images and symbols to make him smarter. Then he becomes so intelligent, he actually uh, immerses himself into the computer. And uh, yeah, it's crazy stuff, man. But um, uh, Teletubbies... Uh, the 2045 like, initiative. Yeah. And, uh, oh, wow. I, and I think they were doing that to the kids, man, because when I f- stopped the picture, you could see a symbol within the flash that 3D comes up to the screen like that. So uh, my guess is that they're sitting there programming children in the subconscious levels, you know what I mean, with all these symbols coming. Of course, the kids don't know what they are, but they'll pick up in the subconscious and they open up spiritual realms. That's what I really believe, because you said these are, por- these are gateways, these are strongholds for demonic things, and they're used for those purposes. So imagine... Um, subconscious, like a camera, you know, the old cameras, they take the light of flash and it draws a picture. Uh, same thing in your mind. You know what I mean? When these things get flashed into your mind, you don't see them on a conscious level. The subconscious picks them up. And sometimes you have dreams with these symbols. Like, where the hell did I even see that from? Yeah, subconscious picked it up during some kind of a uh, broadcast like that. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's crazy, man. And, uh, they, it's sick that they actually do this stuff to kids, man. And in the cartoons, like, uh, we could go on forever with the Disney stuff and all that. They inject these symbols all over the kids' cartoons. It, it's nuts. I'm sorry, man. I oh, just... no, you're fine. It's actually funny you say that about Disney because um, the one request that my wife had for this show was for me to get the Scrooge McDuck uh, <laughs> picture from DuckTales where there's an eye exam in the background that says, Ask About Illuminati. And I forgot to put it in the slides. Um. But yeah, I mean, this stuff's everywhere. So I actually sat down with my wife the other day because um, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is on HBO Max. And we sat down and I was like, hey, I want you to watch this. And I want to see if you pick up the same things. from. Oh, this there it I is. Do. I'm sorry. Um, I got the picture for you. And um, the DuckTales. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean. By the way, nobody to this day apparently will come forward as the one who did that. And the reason for that, for anybody who may not know, the number one rule with the Illuminati, if you're actually in it, is you're not allowed to use the word Illuminati. And that is why Adam Weishaupt's, uh, the theory is anyway, that is why Adam Weishaupt's Illuminati actually failed 
when it was done in the open is because he broke that cardinal rule. Mm. Um, but yeah, you're not, you're not supposed to use that word. Um, of course, I'm basing that off of what I have read and behold a pale horse and books of that nature. Um, but, you know, we sat down and we watched this Full Metal Alchemist show, just the first episode. Because growing up, my wife was really into Avatar The Last Airbender, which, you know, talks about the same things. It's about bending elements. Um, of course, the Avatar is, you know, and, you know, looking back on it now, it's so obvious that he was designed to normalize people for the Antichrist that was to come. Um, but... In my opinion, Full Metal Alchemist goes farther because it takes that, it takes what was made popular in that show and then turns alchemy and these elements into just a science with rules. And to an extent, magic, all magic is, is a science that is, well, the seculars will tell you it's just a science that hasn't fully been formed out. I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's a science that is forbidden hmm. because you can observe and you can repeat, but there's things that we were neither meant to observe, repeat, nor even indulge in. And alchemy is one of those things. Now, of course, the first thing my wife and I noticed, if you watch this show is these two brothers, their names are Edward and Alphonse. Um, and their dad was apparently a state alchemist. Now, get this. I kid you not. You cannot make this stuff up. They live in a parallel dimension where alchemists work for a ruler known as the freaking Fuhrer. Huh. I wow. kid you not. And all the soldiers are dressed like Nazi Germany. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's literally Nietzsche's Ubermensch. Which, that's what all of this is. All of this, and I'm going to prove that with the last thing we talk about. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself. <laughs> but, um, you know, you know, it, it just astounds me. But basically what happens is their dad disappears. Their mom ends up being sick. And these kids are like six years old and ten years old. And Edward has a proclivity for alchemy. And in this universe, the alchemy has this thing called the Law of Equivalent Exchange. We would know that as sacrifice is what it is. If you want this knowledge, you have to sacrifice something of equal value to get it. That's what the law of equivalent exchange is. I believe that the law of equivalent exchange is the, is the number one rule of Satan's kingdom. At least that's what he wants you to think. That's why he puts in human sacrifice. And that's kind of what happens when Edward and Alphonse try to bring their mom back. They try to do a human transmutation, which is actually the goal of alchemy. Of course, the show doesn't want you to know that because it says it's forbidden. But when they try to bring her back, Alphonse, the younger brother, loses his body completely, and it's just a disembodied soul, which is a demon, is essentially what it is. And of course, Edward takes the blood from where he lost his arm and his leg, and he binds his brother's soul to a suit of armor. This is how dark this stuff gets in the very first episode. Whoa. That is outright black magic. That's blood magic. Blood magic, more than any other black magic, is the most abominable form of a forbidden art that you could practice. By the Bible is very clear throughout that blood is one of those things you just don't mess with. Oh, yeah, and not in Dicto as many, but it's hundreds of verses about that. Yeah. Well, and this is what I tell people when I explain to people, you know, and this is something that I don't even think science has caught up to yet because you're not going to catch up to it when you don't have the right worldview and mentality. But the soul is obviously housed in the blood. That's what the Bible says. Life is in the blood, right? Mm -hmm. It makes sense. You lose too much blood, you die. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> blood holds a memory. Look at people that have heart transplants. You know, they have memories based off of emotions of other people. You know, that's, 
I mean, that's stuff that I don't, I personally don't think we should dabble in either. You know, there comes a point where I think as, as, as hard as it is for us to say, there is a point I think where you can cheat death with some of the medical breakthroughs that we've made. And of course that's their goal. But you know, when people get like heart transplants, I get it. You're saving life. But is there a point where God wouldn't want us to save life? This is just a question I'm asking myself. I don't know. I'm not saying it's wrong. These are just the questions that I wrestle with because being ADHD, I mean, I'm sure you guys have noticed, I never sit still. I'm constantly moving, and my mind is constantly moving even faster than my mouth is, which I know is hard to believe. (laughs) But, yeah, but this is the kind of stuff that you get into when you watch, like, Full Metal Alchemist. By the way, this was not originally what I was going to talk about tonight. Once I discovered Full Metal Alchemist, and I was like, I'm, you know, I'm finally going to sit down and I'm going to look into this. I watched it, um, and I was like, yeah, I got to add this. This is just this is just too on the nose to what we're talking about. Um, because, like, I don't know if you guys realize this, but anime and manga are one of the world's most popular mediums to consume in entertainment, <clears throat> especially in Japan. Manga is the number one entertainment medium in Japan, hands down. Now, of course, I grew up on it with things like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Um, I used to be a huge Yu-Gi-Oh! fan. Like, I'm still finding Yu-Gi-Oh! cards that I thought I got rid of years ago. I just had that many. I used to have all the Egyptian god cards. I mean, I was into this stuff. When I tell you that I was into the esoteric, I was into like I was into it. I was like elbow deep in this stuff. Uh, like from every angle, I got to the point where I was literally about to order a crystal ball, and I to this day I have no idea why. Like that is just the stupidest thing that I could have done, and for whatever reason, because I knew better. But I just I can't remember. It was like I just like got bewitched, and I was like, I really need to get one of these. Like you open yourself up to so much suggestion when you're in this stuff that you just start thinking of things that are placed in your head that make no sense because you're under the influence of something else. Yeah. Um, uh, And I know this would probably be a good time. I know you said you had some slides you wanted to run by people. Oh, yeah. Oh, you had um, Barbados on here? I guess uh, a couple more things. Yeah, I'm going to save him. I'm oh, okay. All right. We'll do that. Yeah. So, now what I was going to do is, um, cause I got, uh, some slides too. I want to show too. And, uh, yeah, please, uh, any time, man, cause it would be probably a little bit lengthy, which would give you a good break, but any time, man, just jump in, uh, just cut me off, jump in. And, uh, and you got all uh, these things up on screen. <coughs> do what? Do you have, um, uh, are you watching on the video? I am. I'm trying to figure out a way. Like I've got the chat pulled up. Yeah. I've just got to figure out because like Rumble is different. So yeah. let me do this. Okay. I just figured it out. Yeah. Just open it up and just mute the. You know the. Rumble yeah, that's channel. what I was trying to figure out. Was yeah. How to mute it, but I think I've got it. All right. Yeah, I can see you up there now. All right. Cool. So uh, some of the stuff I want to show you, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, everyday <laughs> symbols, right? So now. I got an iPhone. He's on an Apple computer, right? So I'm not saying using these things are evil, please, because I got um, uh, harassed last time. Oh, what are you saying it's evil? You know, whatever. No, I'm not saying. But the people, all right, j- just check this out here. Yeah. So <laughs> the first Apple symbol, uh, Rob Janoff, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, in 1977, Apple your technology, right? There's a reason why there's a bite out of the apple. And the, the first one was rainbow color, not for the LGBT, uh, but rainbow was um, basically it's a Kabbalah. That's one of the tie-dye shirts and everything. It's all Kabbalah, you know what I mean? And so that, especially back then, that was the you know the cool color, uh, the Kabbalah. So anyway, the Apple computer, as you can see over the years, the symbols just evolved to different colors, but it never really changed. It's, a, it's an apple with the bite out of it. You know what I mean? And he has Apple Computer, the original logo. Notice, right? There's a, somebody under the tree, right? And look what's right above his head. is an apple. You know? So this represents... Not, and the thing is, nobody really knows what the actual fruit is. All right? So want to get that out there. Of, you know, the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Well, this is where it goes to. And uh, this is... For some reason, the occult symbolized the apple as that forbidden fruit. 
You know what I mean? And we're not saying eating apples for uh, evil and something like that. No, because God would have told us. You know what I mean? We don't know if what that food was. Eating apples was evil. Then my children are in trouble because they yeah. ate three before I even came here tonight. Exactly. <laughs> Same with mine. You know, and uh, <laughs> and we all ate apple pie and everything else. You know, and uh, so that's why they, for some reason, they chose the apple as a symbol. So, and it's funny, right? The first home Apple computer. This is on record. Was six hundred and sixty-six dollars and sixty-six cents. Not even joking. This is you can look, check old ads. The first Apple-based home computer. Right now, the Department of Education of the United States of America. What do they use? Look at that. A tree. Huh. A tree of, of the which symbolizes the tree of wisdom. And uh, there's a disgusting show my ex-wife used to watch all the time. Uh, I don't even know what it was for a while. And until one day I sat down to watch it with her. It's a, a show called Desperate Housewives. Now look at the logos. There's a serpent on a tree, apples, and a naked lady. It symbolizing Eve, right? And there we go. A serpent, a bunch. And now, now, now mind you, this show is disgusting. It's about a bunch of housewives. They're all friends, right? And guess what? They cheat on their husbands. They promote promiscuity. Uh, and very nasty stuff. And some sleep with each other's husbands. It's horrible. And I'm like, why in hell are you watching this? But that's a whole story altogether. Uh, but yeah, um, that, yeah, that's exactly what it symbolized. This is TV shows. And most people look at that, these, they don't even look, and I pointed this out to my wife at the time, and I think she stopped watching after that. But it's like, you ever notice the symbols? No, I didn't, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, that's what this symbolizes. Uh, Apple, for some reason, the occult, they symbolize it as the, the forbidden fruit of good and knowledge, you know, the knowledge of good and evil. And that's another reason why apples chose that as a forbidden fruit of knowledge, because Apple's all about knowledge, you know what I mean, uh, and their computers and everything else, and yeah, and I, I use an Apple iPhone, you know what I mean, I love the thing, but the thing is that, you know, I'm not saying using this evil, you know, but this is what they do in the occult, you know what I mean, this is how they point stuff out, in TV shows, everything, and y'all go to, you know, a lot of people go to Starbucks, let's face it, they got some good coffee, okay, plain and simple, but if you notice, they got a siren, which is, uh, you know, is a logo, you know what I mean, not a coincidence, you know what I mean? And uh, whoops, I forgot there. So, a siren is a Greek mythology, a creature half bred, uh, I'm sorry, half bird, half woman, lured. And when I say bird, it's actually a. I think somebody messed up on that. It's um, half fish, which is known as a mermaid type of thing. And she's a seductress. And that's why you see, uh, remember the movie um, uh, My Little Mermaid in uh, the Disney movie? And she had this angelic voice when she sang. Yeah, and not a coincidence, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, and as destru and she's destructed by the sweetness of her song, according to H Homer, while there were two sirens in the island on Western Sea be uh, between Aya and, uh, I can't see the rest of it, but yeah, that's what it is. That's what it represents. It's uh, ancient siren, and there's a little mermaid there, and she had this angelic voice that would hypnotize men and seduce them, and end up killing them, you know what I mean? And there's also, um, you know, sirens that actually, you know, they screech, too. It's horrible. They make this loud screech and makes you go deaf, too. Uh, but, yeah, and that those are the ones with um, the snakes in here. But, yeah, but you see the symbolism in movies. That's what I was trying to point out here. And uh, the Monster Energy, I did a whole video on this. But um, if you look at the can of Monster Energy, right, and you're like, oh, yeah, it's a cool logo. Absolutely, it's cool. I, I actually had the logo on my... Uh, you know, the stickers of it and all my stuff until one day I'm looking at it. It's like, hmm, something looks weird about this. And I was studying some Hebrew and all that, and I'm like, yeah, there's something very weird about those letters because that M is, if you actually see it, it's actually not, they're not connected. It's three of these weird Cheeto-looking like things, you know what I mean? And then if you look at the O, it looks like uh, an Egyptian Coptic cross, but in verse, because Egyptian Coptic cross has, um, you know, the... the the round pot going over the top of it, but it's underneath. Why is there a cross in the monster? Release the beast, and what does these mean? Well, if you actually looked at it, um, it's Vav, the sixth letter. Now, people say, well, it's the second. No, because you've got to remember, in Hebrew, you start from, you read from the right to the left, not left to right, right? So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a sixth letter, each one. Sixth letter for the uh, Hebrew, Hebrew um, Vav, number six. You have, therefore, you have the Vav right there. There's three of them. 666 six, six, right there and there's not a coincidence they put monster energy release the beast you know what i mean it's not a coincidence you know what i mean you're really and then that, that's what the sim with that portraying now everybody else looks like a cool logo which it does but yeah you gotta know what you're looking at here and um this would be uh you know the egyptian coptic egyptians they would have that uh bow above the cross that was um uh 
like some old Christian Orthodox, basically, of Egyptian version of Christianity, you know what I mean? But they got it underneath, which would be opposite of Christianity, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, somewhat almost symbolized an upside down cross, but 666 unleashed the beast, you know what I mean? Not a coincidence, and it doesn't stop there. You got Red Bull, right? So what's so bad about Red Bull? You know, again, we're not saying it's evil to drink these uh, because I'd be a major hypocrite. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, look look at the cans. What's so wrong about that? And people say, I don't get it. What are you trying to say? Well, if you look, right, first of all, any occult, you always hear about equality, duality, and all that. So you got the two bulls with the sun deity in the background facing each other, symbolizing duality. And you got the, um, the checkerboard, and a lot of times you'll see it's black and white and Masonic floors, and sometimes it's uh, silver or, uh, or blue. It represents as above, so below. So you're looking at this ancient esoteric knowledge that, you know, in Red Bull, it says uh, the original language is like a Red Bull gives you angel wings. Now take a look at that logo, right? Always notice that the cartoons all the time always had X in the angel's eyes. Now, if you've ever seen the, you know, the Looney Tunes and all that, when Bugs Bunny or whatever got shot, right, and they, you know, the spirits went into heaven, you see the X's in the eyes because it's symbolizing they're dead. Yeah, that's a fallen angel. <laughs> a Red Bull gives you angel wings. Yeah, fallen angel. You know what I mean? And yeah, uh, this is esoteric knowledge. And the thing is, they put this on a can. They know damn well what it is. Uh, and everybody else thinks it's a cool logo. And the can does look cool, but again, you gotta you know really see things as what they're for, what they are, you know. And it's not a coincidence, yeah. You, know, you know, release the beast of monster energy, and Red Bull gives you angel wings. What kind of angels are? Fallen angels, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so then you get to the when we get to equality duality. Now you see this in dojos everywhere. Uh, I'm a, and I want to say it right now, I'm a black belt in Kempo, a black belt in Shotokan, you know, uh, Japanese Shotokan, right? This symbol is widely used in probably all the martial arts, right? This is some, one symbol I refuse to wear on my gi, and um, I told them I, I'd rather give up my black belt than have to wear this thing on my gi, you know what I mean? Because one of the federations that school belongs to, they demand you to wear it, and uh, also a monk patch is like, no, you can take my black belt and shove it, seriously. Uh, I'd rather do that than have to wear these, because the people say, oh, it's a yin-yang, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, there's a major things wrong with that. That is equality, duality on its own right there. So what that symbolizes, because if you're a Christian, you say there's nothing wrong with this symbol, all right? I'm going to tell you what's wrong with the symbol. This says that, you know how God, God our almighty, right? God is the creator. He's the all-powerful, right? This says the other way around. This says evil is just as powerful as uh, good. It's equality. Just as, as above, so below. And just as much as, and they call it balance in the universe. You hear that all through movies, right? Balance. We've got to maintain balance. In other words, the perfect balance between good and evil. There's no perfect balance between good and evil. You know what I mean? Good is good, and this also represents the androgynous, too, when uh, Trey was talking about, uh, which they believe, the God they believe in is uh, the both male and female, and Satan and God himself. You know what I mean? All in one. It's crazy, man. But that's what it represents. So next time you wear that and think, it's always oh, just an innocent karate thing, no, you better actually go learn what the symbol means, because it's not something, as a follower of Jesus, you should not be wearing that thing on your gi. Or a cool keychain or something. So I just want to let people know that. And so, as above, so below. And if you notice the reflection in the pool there. And this is, um, and there's a snake around this whole thing. We'll get to that in a minute. And that's called an Ouroboros. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you see an as above, so below. Again, they, you know, saying, uh, you know, because when, you know, the Lord's Prayer says, um, Heaven and earth, whatever the case, as on heaven, as in heaven, they'll be on earth, whatever the case. Uh, but they take that to a whole new level. You know what I mean? Again, they use everything biblical and pervert it and put the mirror image. So they believe that evil and good are just as powerful. That's why it's black and white and reflections and everything else. They believe it's all equal. You know what I mean? And it's the same exact thing as wearing that. By the way, yep. that, that symbol with the Seal of Solomon with the two guys. Yep. Just to let everybody know, that's the one that I was talking about with uh, Eliphas Levi. Mm -hmm. He's the one that drew that, and that's his, according to him, that is white Jehovah and black Jehovah. So, perfect. that's actually out of, I believe that is out of his Transcendental Magic book. Yeah, actually, I've seen this symbol in there, I think. And there it is right there, well, you know, the... The Baphomet. Notice how it has a set of girls' breasts. 
<laughs> and a giant penis, whatever the case, symbolizes an androgynous spirit, right? Notice how he's pointing down and pointing up to white and black. And yeah, everything is it's equality, duality, as above, so below, androgynous spirit. So this all representates uh, these symbols you see on the cans and everything else and uh, you know, the products you buy every day, man. It's crazy, man. And uh, the rock star energy, so, oh, what the hell is wrong with that? Well, you notice there's two R's on the star. They're facing opposite directions, which would represent uh, uh, equality. Then when they face each other, it's duality. You know what I mean? That's how it is in the occult. And, uh, and that, you know, eastern star, pentagram, you know what I mean? And this other one's got to really boggle people's minds. You ever wonder why Texaco has a T inside that star? You know, I understand Texaco. Texas is the Lone Star State, and they have the T in the middle. People, people go, oh, it's, oh, yeah, that's what it means, you know. Texas for Texaco in there, but, yeah, take a look at that. Put it upside down. It goes from Eastern Star with a cross to a Western Star with an upside down cross. And, if, you know, there's Anton LaVey's, uh, one of Anton LaVey's um, altars right there. So, I mean, you could take this as you will. I mean, yeah, and normally it would be like, yeah, all right, that's just Texaco. But, again, these people know what they're doing. You know what I mean? And uh, you invert it and everything else. And uh, either way, it's some, you know, it's uh, it's one of the symbols they use to, blunt, you know, just throw into your face every day. You know what I mean? Say, hey, oh, that's what it means. And, uh, you know, text go, but that's what it actually means. And uh, I don't know if you've seen some of these Baphomet uh, pictures. I didn't want to show it. It's this one here. Okay? I didn't want to show it because how disgusting and perverted it is. Very disgusting. Now, you see Baphomet there, right? There's images of him with no clothes on at all, right? And he's got the cross upside down. He's sitting on it. I'm going to leave it at that, all right? Very nasty, perverted, disgusting. And that's how the occult is. It's the nasty, sexual perversion of everything uh, the Bible tries to teach, you know what I mean? And they take stuff of God and pervert it. And they make their own stuff up too, you know? And uh, that's what they do in the occult, you know what I mean? And again, another depiction of the goat of Mendez, the Baphomet. That's what it's called. And, of course, uh, we did a whole show on this. Yeah, the, the so-called Star of David. Whoa, wait a minute. The Bible says there was never a Star of David. You know what I mean? Nowhere in the Bible or the Torah does it ever refer to David even having a star. But he does, the Bible does say it's a star of Rephem. You know what I mean? I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, in other words, Moloch. Satan. You know what I mean? And uh, if you go to Amos um, 5.26, Acts 7.43, it says the symbol is condemned in the Old Testament and it was condemned in the New Testament. King David had nothing to do with the symbol. So why does the Jews have it? Because it has a blow. Now, the whole thing with the star, uh, long story short, um, there was a designers who funded the whole uh, Israel becoming a nation again. So they, and uh, it was rumored that uh, real Jews that knew the stuff, right? They were really pissed off that they put that star on the flag. They wanted the menorah on the flag, which that would have been rightfully cool, you know, but they decided to put that star on it because it represents the Kabbalah. That's what it does, ancient Kabbalah, and it represents man over God. There's so many, uh, man, it's crazy. That's why we did a whole show on this. Actually, we did two full shows on just that one symbol. That's how much stuff that's contained in there. But, yeah, I'm just showing you guys, uh, people, Christians out there, wear these necklaces all the time or flags, and you have no idea what you're wearing. <laughs> David never had a star, so I'm going to leave it at that. You know what I mean? That's a whole story altogether, man. And then some. So, yeah, this would be uh, what Israel's flag should look like with the menorah, the real one, the real Jews. And the fake one, as the Bible in uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3 talks about the ones who profess to be Jews but are not. And they belong to the synagogue of Satan. There you go. That's the synagogue of Satan. A real Jews, like, uh, again, back then, they wanted the menorah on the flag. You know what I mean? So, and again, we're not saying people from Israel are bad people. We're not saying anything like that. Just saying with that star on the flag, uh, yeah, that's not a star of David, plain and simple. And we talked about the Ouroboros. That's the old ancient serpent biting its own tail or dragon, whatever they use. Yeah, it's biting its own tail. So, and you call it, and that's where uh, the wedding ring comes from, too. It uh, symbolizes eternity. You know what I mean? Like nonstop, like uh, out with the old and with the new, uh, symbolizing uh into the new age sort of thing, you know what I mean? So there's so many meanings into this. And uh, so this is very equivalent. Now, you know, you got to see this in a lot of symbols now, right? And ads. He has an ad for the show Millennium, right? Notice there's a serpent right there by its tail. That's, a sa that's uh, one of the oldest ancient satanic symbols out there. Right there, boom. 
67 episodes they ran in that uh, logo. And there's that, um, you know, uh, Leaf with Levi picture there. With the, see the logo around him now? The serpent. Now you're starting to see these things. And again, the Orobus, a serpent coiled up in a circle, biting its own tail, is pictured as a Gnostics rooster combination creature in this illustration. And uh, yeah, it's different creatures that do that, but they symbolize the same thing. Notice there's a sun and the moon there. The sun and the moon represents night and day, good and evil, something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's it duality, you know? And the sun and the moon symbolize the conjunction of the opposites, which is the alchemical doctrine of the Illuminism. And this is out of the book... Uh, uh, Codex Magic or Text Mars and again he has the Orobris and there's always a point in there too sometime that's uh, um, that's sexual union so the styles of Orobris serpent bites its own tail forming a circle with the body inside the circle is the point of Lucifer now and the, you see a lot of times the circles will point in it you know what I mean it's um, a male mountain of female it's sexual union you know what I mean and uh, <laughs> I hate to put it that way, yeah, but yeah, exactly what it is. And it, it's very perverted stuff in the cult, you know what I mean? And yeah, it does represent Lucifer, exactly, you know what I mean? And uh, there's uh, Prozac. When Prozac first came out, look, look, serpent around the sun, but it's on tail. And Prozac, I forgot what it does. It's yeah, it's a medication, it's popular. And notice how there's sixes, you know, the suns and sixes all over the place, yeah. And then remember Lucent Technology? There's a serpent, a, a robrus, right? And loose in technology, you can look this up, not even joking, okay? When it came out, guess what their name was? Lucifer Technologies. They were actually located at 666 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Not a coincidence. And that, you, you see this in the offices. They use loose in technology, the phones and technology they have. You'll see this logo on the products. Oh, and, uh, by the way. Yep. Sorry to cut you off. No, but go do you know who go. owned 666 Fifth Avenue up until like two years ago? Oh, uh, Trump's brother, son-in-law, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing. Because it was gaining so much um, media attention, after he sold it, they actually changed the address. It is no longer 666 Fifth Avenue. <laughs> I guess it was just a little too on the nose for them. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, too. And uh, Trump's son, there, he was uh, leading uh, the whole, helping him with the whole thing with Israel at the time. Remember the temple and everything? So it's kind of mm -hmm. interesting. I don't well, trust it. Yeah, I mean, Kushner is chummy with people like Netanyahu. I mean, mm -hmm. they're very much, this is what I've been trying to get people to realize, is that family is so interconnected with not only the American deep state, but the Israeli deep state, that it's not even funny. Yeah. That's I mean, why not I, only uh, that, I, but I mean, you and I have proved without a shadow of a doubt that they're also in bed with communist China. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what, when I was, thought for sure Trump was going to win that, you know what I mean? And uh, because of that connection with Israel and everything else, maybe it's just, I, I, to me, I really think this is a whole ploy. They allowed um, Biden to win. It's all part of the, the plan. I don't know. I could be wrong. I, it's just something stinks to high heavens with this whole thing. Trump and, yeah, sure, Trump's for our civil liberties, but however, could that be a ploy just to lure us in, you know what I mean? And, uh, but um, he travels around with these people, so called Christians, like Paul White. They're not Christians, they're New Ages, you know what I mean? Big difference, you know what I mean? And Jared Kushner with his deep Israel connections, the Zionist connections, yeah. Uh, something stinks to high heavens. And then putting Trump on the coin with Cyrus, King Cyrus. Unreal, man. Really is. And uh, so, see, uh, that, yeah, you'll see me, this. Oh, I'm sorry. The whole coin thing. Yep. That just proved that that's who they wanted to be their Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's who they want. Now, I'm a, I've am i gone on record saying this before. I'm going to say it again. You can laugh at me. You can ridicule me. Honestly, I don't care. Um, I think that if Trump were to get reelected, he would be an excellent candidate for the Antichrist. And yes. people laugh at me when I say that. But you know what? I mean, put aside that and look at the fact that he really is a man of sin. He does whatever the heck he wants, whenever the heck mm -hmm. he wants. He's been... I mean, I've literally shown family members pictures of him waving a pride flag. And there's like, well, if there's no way that you can prove that those are real. I'm like, not everything can be fake. No, those are real because uh, you know, he he came. I seen a live thing with him supporting the, you know the LGBT and everything. Not only that, there's video you can find. Yep. You know, I don't think people realize how hard it is to actually. So I've worked with 
3D models, CGI, things like that, very, very minimally. My brother, he could give you more on that. I mean, he's got a film studio. Um, but this stuff is so hard to doctor. Um, I mean, just look at, first of all, look at how bad some of the stuff out of the Biden White House is that supposedly has, like, unlimited resources. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. It's yeah. lazy. Oh, you really is. think that they did that good of a job rendering a video of Trump waving around a flag? By the way, flags and capes are the hardest thing in the world to CGI. If you don't believe me, go watch the movie Spawn. Spawn's mm. cape in that movie looks like garbage. Yeah. Which is fine with me because Spawn's a demon and doesn't deserve a big movie anyway. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, it these things are not easy. Um so you know, it's just... It makes total sense, man, because um, right now, uh, you know, he was popular, but, you know, he had a lot of people against him. Now, like, right now, like, uh, I think if the election was tomorrow, he destroyed Biden on a landslide because people, you know, being suffocated from the, you know, the inflation, the gas price, and whole nine yards, right? So I think they're portraying him, pushing him up to be the, the literal hero, and he's going to come in and make peace. Makes sense, too, because, well, now, check this out, right? Now you, you, you got me stumbled upon something. Uh, check this out, right? You got all this war going on, right? Trump made peace with well, dictators that you never thought possible, right? He made all these peace with Putin and everybody else, right? The first president to go see, uh, what's his name, in uh, North Korea, you know what I mean? And so now check this out. Biden comes in, just makes things horrible, right? And all wars picking up, and Trump comes in, right? He restores peace with Russia. He restores peace with China, restores peace with North Korea, restores all this peace, right? And everybody loves this guy because he's like, oh, I'm going to protect your liberties. I'm going to save your liberties and all that. Then his connection with Israel, not a coincidence that building the third temple as we speak. You know what I mean? And he gets adorned as the, you know what I mean, the Messiah or something. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. I think you're, on, you're onto something, man. Because I, I, when you were talking about that, I could picture this going on in my head. Because he did, you know, he was a you know, Nobel Peace Prize, I believe. Or at least uh, they were calling to give him a Nobel Peace Prize. Because he was doing that no, things that no other president has ever done with the, you know, meeting with these dictators that nobody else would, you know. And so I think um, Biden's going to mess things up so bad. He's going to come in and be the savior of it all. And restore peace throughout the world, and this temporary peace, as, as the Bible says. And then you know, this the world's gonna love him. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't know, man. But yeah, we should do a show on that too, man. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, get this. So because this, this, that, and look, it, it, you know, people might think this is a tangent, but I'm gonna prove that even this applies to what we're talking about. Because you look at people like Batman and Iron Man. What is the number one thing that they are programming and hypnotizing people to believe? It's that billionaires like Trump and Musk will come in and be your savior. Oh, trust the billionaires. They got the resources. Batman and Iron Man, right? They're going to come in and make everything better. Except for the fact that um, Batman's father, this is proven in the Court of Owls storyline, and this is going to feed right into the Barbados thing. This is why I said I was saving it. Didn't even realize why I was saving it, but I'm glad I did. That's only a God thing. Um, Batman's father in the Court of Owls storyline it was revealed. Oh, Actually, gonna... it might have not even been. No, it wasn't the Court of Owls. This feeds perfectly into Barbados. Oh, so you know, confuse people. Out. You want me? Um, because I had a few more slides left. But uh, you want to go into yours first? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and pull that one up if you want. Um, I mean, like, um, because uh, actually, hold on one second, guys. So well, before we get that, then we'll come back to the slides here. And um, so yeah, let's just talk about the six sixty six fifth down. It was the office of Lucifer, Lucent, then Lucifer, then Lucent Technologies, and um, they were working on RFID chips for every American. And the building, was, you know, up until a couple of years ago, was owned by Jerry Kushner. So uh, before we go any further with this, let me get back to it, uh, trade slides here because it's good to split this stuff up. So. It's not monotonous. So uh, this Barbados on the screen. Yeah. So basically, I'm gonna. So I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish what I was just saying about these uh, about Bruce Wayne's dad, because it feeds into this. He was a part of what was called the Court of Owls, which was revealed in Scott Snyder's first run of DC's New Fifty Two. Now, what you find out is that 
people like Thomas Wayne were a part of this cult that would partake in human sacrifice to try to resurrect Barbados. Now, you're getting a similar thing with Iron Man, just to mm. touch on that. It was just revealed that he was the son of Mephisto, which is based off of Mephistopheles, and he is Marvel's equivalent to Satan. But getting back to Barbados, Barbados was a bad guy back in, I think, 2017. He was the big villain of the Dark Knight's Metal, uh, full DC crossover. And basically what it was designed to do was Barbados was uh it's trapped in the dark multiverse so he got around he got evil versions of bruce wayne uh including one known as the batman who laughs who was basically like a jokerized version of batman and he came and invaded the regular like main dc universe and took over now as you can see on uh it's been on it's up on the screen at least i'm watching it now on the screen um in demonology, Barbados is an earl and a duke of hell who rules 30 legions of demons. Now, what's interesting is you look at that if you read this story and he just comes with these legions of these demonic Batmans. So, um, but it actually comes. He is like the, he's one of the demons that is listed in the lesser key of Solomon. Now, where in the world are these guys getting this information? Because I just heard that, and I was like, Barbados. Of course, you hear Barbados, you think of like the country Barbados, right? Or the place Barbados. Mm -hmm. But I noticed it was spelled different. I was like, that's interesting. That looks like a Greek name. So I looked it up, and that's how I found this stuff out. You know, it doesn't take much. Now, this guy right here, I mean, just look at his picture. I mean, he looks evil. He looks extremely evil. Looks um, like there's a dead person right in front of him. On the bottom? Yeah. Now, if you look at the full picture of that, one of the dead people in front of him is actually Superman. Oh. Yeah. I mean, this is how, like, this dude... So, they basically... The way the story ended was Batman and Superman and a bunch of other people basically had to go take over the power of creation itself and were wearing these very bright, illuminated suits to defeat him. Now, I wonder where they got that information. Because to me, that sounds like getting the divine sparks from the Kabbalah to reach full illumination in their mind. Like they've reached their Illuminati status, right? Yeah. I mean, this is like, this stuff's there. You can't make this stuff up. You know, this is, I mean, this, I mean, this is what it is. Now, of course, when you look at what superheroes are standing for, when you understand Nietzsche's Ubermensch and the fact that, so basically comic book writers are basically saying that this is their way of teaching society their morality code. I literally listened to a clip of a comic book um like artist or something saying so basically we're just making our own ongoing bible and that's exactly what they're doing because the whole point of nietzsche's ubermensch when you read things like thus spoke zarathustra is um nietzsche was looking for a way to have morality in a society that was giving up god nietzsche didn't think you needed god to have morality and nothing could be further from the truth but this is how they've done it. They've given you things like Superman and Batman and some of the other superheroes we're going to talk about here in just a minute. Now, I know the next slide after this is called The Boys. Do you have that one? Uh, yep. So this is The Boys. And just to give you a little bit of a backstory on The Boys, The Boys was written by Irish comic book uh, writer Garth Ennis, who is an atheist. And the boys in this picture is a group of normal human beings who uh, basically are a task force to take down superheroes. And what's funny is, just a funny fact, that one guy with the goatee is actually designed to be Simon Pegg, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> um, but um, do you have people like Billy Butcher um, and all of his people mother's milk the frenchman the female of the species and like this is what they do but what i found interesting 
going through the comic books and the show, which, by the way, is an absolute filthy show, um, is there is this group called Samaritans Embrace. And I literally sent Dan a screenshot of the wiki page that says Samaritans Embrace is a Christian charity that is sponsored by Vought International, which is the big corporation that owns superheroes. And the show heavily plays into the fact you could go to Vought Land, which is obviously Disneyland. Like they're letting you know who the power behind it is. And uh, they feed into the Disney thing, let me tell you. But it's sponsored by Vought International Soups or Superheroes and is headed by the Elastic Ezekiel. On the surface, it is a charity committed to helping those in need. However, unbeknownst to the public, it was being used by Ezekiel to ship Compound V, which is Vought's uh, super soldier serum, to hospitals across the United States. By the way, um, the show actually goes on to say that they were doing it under the guise of vaccines, specifically polio vaccines. Um, by the way, uh, the first season of this show was 2019 before the pandemic hit, which I thought was incredible. Um, but, of course, I see Samaritans Embrace, and I go, oh, my gosh. And that was when I texted you, Dan, and I was like, dude, have you ever <laughs> heard of the show The Boys? Because I heard Samaritans Embrace, and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's Samaritan's Purse. Like, it's just too similar. Now, maybe I'm just reading into things. But Samaritan's Purse does the same thing. Of course, they're the ones who do shoeboxes at Christmas to give people things like in like third world countries like socks <clears throat> and toothbrushes and things like that. You know, basic necessities. Which I got no problem with anybody giving, you know, people things in need. My problem is, is why, number one, why, why Christmas? Like they need this stuff other times of the year, too. But they seem to only focus on Christmas, which I think is just so wrong on so many levels. Never forget the fact of the pagan holiday. Hmm. Why would you only give somebody something one time a year when they need it year round? That really bothered me for a long time. But then look at the fact that number one, who owns it, who runs it? Franklin Graham is the president of Samaritan's Purse. Now, of course, we've talked about Franklin Graham before, and I've put slides on what we talked about him with. I've got that picture. Um, just to give plug myself here real quick, we did a show over a year ago. It is one of my highest viewed shows on Brighteon. And it is the, rep uh, the Apostate Report, Franklin Graham False Teacher, where we basically talked about him shilling for the COVID vaccine. And then, not even long ago, on CCR Weekly number 13, just to put it into perspective, I got about eight minutes through CCR Weekly number 25 before my system crashed last week. There won't be an episode this week, by the way, guys, because I will not be back home until about 10 or 11 o'clock uh, tomorrow night. So, um, But we talked about him again with our cursed gospel. Um, he was kind of our false teacher spotlight. And then, of course, if you look over here on this picture, this is him in front of Voodoo Donuts, which, I mean, there's tons of testimony saying that this Voodoo Donuts is a child trafficking place. You and I have talked about that before, Dan. But this is the guy who runs Samaritan's Embrace. I meant Samaritan's Purse. So is it just me, or is there, like, a huge parallel here? I was so floored when I saw this thing about Samaritan's Embrace. I'm like, because I was like, oh my gosh, they're telling you what they're doing. Because, of course, eventually they want to get to the point where well, they want you to think that they're going to give you a super soldier serum. That's why they're normalizing it. And I find, like I said, I find no coincidence that this came out. Season one of The Boys literally came out in 2019, the year before COVID hit, right? And here they are talking about super soldier serums and vaccines. I don't think that's by mistake. Um, yeah. I mean, and look, so here's the thing about this. So, and I told you this when we were talking, like I said, I mean, this show was just, I mean, 
it was some of the stuff. I, I, I've never had to skip so many scenes in a show before. It was just shameful. But the elastic Ezekiel, who is supposed to be like this seeker-friendly, tattooed uh, preacher um, who does this pray the gay away stuff, literally they blackmail him into getting information about this Compound V stuff by showing pictures of him kissing another guy. Wow. I mean, but this, and this is what I want people to realize, is that this stuff is not fiction. This is real. Look at what is going on right now with Brian Houston and Hillsong and the fact that he stepped down from leadership because there were questions about him covering up the pedophilia of his father. Or the fact that Carl Lentz, his protege, was fired from Hillsong, New York, because he was having inappropriate relationships with a woman while married. Hmm. Like this is, this is not fiction. No. These are the people that run our Christian organizations. Yep. And you best believe I could show pictures of Carl Lentz with people like Jay Z, who's known for his do what thou wilt sweatshirt and him throwing up Illuminati hand signs and all of this stuff. Like these people are put here. And this was one of the things that I found interesting about this show was it shows you the fact like all these superheroes when they go to events they read off of a teleprompter like the company will say oh this is your new brand you are to appeal to the such and such demographic um you know and it shows you this is how the world works celebrities are told what to say when to say it how to say it and who to say it to and this is what i mean by superheroes are a stand-in for um the Ubermensch. But not only that, in the boys specifically, they seem to be a stand-in for the elite of the Illuminati because they have this Justice League stand-in known as the Seven um, that stay all their, spend all their time in the top floor conference room of Vought International. Like they are literally the elite of the uh, Trilateral Commission or the Council of Foreign Relations. Like you can't, you can't make this stuff up. No. And, you know, was, it was not, it was really cool being able to see this and get this information. I just, I honestly, I really do. I regret watching this show. It was that bad. And I, it was, it was just, it's shameful. It is. I don't understand why people have to put such vile stuff. I get it. That's what these people really do. And we need to know that. You know, but, you know, that's not why these people were doing it. This guy's an atheist that wrote this series. But what it is, is he doesn't realize he's being used by these powers. Even to the point where uh, the guy I was telling you about, his name's Homelander. He's like a cross between Captain America and Superman. And he ends up having an affair with one of the boy's wife. That was like his assistant. And he asked what happened to her. And they tell him this story of how she got pregnant with his child and the baby literally clawed its way out of her and killed her. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the book of, her, of Second Estrus. <laughs> um, of course, it turns out that that was a lie. Then the boy and the mom were just fine. But I was like, I wonder where, like, because you can't make this stuff up. Where the, Where would somebody get an idea like that? Yeah, and uh, if you look at, I, I forgot to put the slides in. I had a slides of a bunch of um, uh, Greek gods, as you know, in these um, so-called Greek gods, whatever, and you know, aligned with superheroes. You know what I mean? And uh, you can see all all of them have uh, some correlation. Like in other words, like uh, Stan Lee, he got the idea or a lot of these superheroes off of. Uh, he must have been good with Greek mythology or something uh, about their yeah, actually Nephilim. You know what I mean? And uh, men of renown, as the Bible calls them. And there's nothing mythology about Greek mythology, you know what I mean, except for that they, they went gods, you know. And uh, but um, this stuff was real, you know. I mean, we cover this on a lot of shows. However, but uh, they use these ancient so-called gods uh, as today's superheroes, and that's why all these movies are a lot of apocalyptic things. Uh, um, you know, visitors from other planets come here, and they're here to save the day. All kinds of crazy stuff, man. And then at the same time, that's going on. They're making you think the good guys are the bad guys, bad guys are the good guys. And uh, yeah, and if you look at the Batman movie too, 
Uh, he was just introduced now in one of the last, uh, they got a million Batman movies, but um, he was introducing Gotham into um, a technocracy, you know what I mean? Batman was, you know? And then you had uh, Joker trying to save people, but he, same time trying to kill people, too. It's just mixed up, man. But um, it's the old saying the Bible says, uh, woe to those who call good evil and evil good, you know? And uh, you've seen it happen in movies, man. What you think of the good guys are actually the bad guys and stuff like that. There's always a twist to that. But yeah, and then you inject the occultic language with these symbols into into us, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Dark Knight is, uh, you know, it's interesting. If you really look into that, there's good evidence that the Joker in that movie was a um, a war veteran that had survived hostility, and he was trying to show people the corrupt. He is very much designed to be the hero of that movie, in my opinion. But at the same time, he's a nihilist, and that's what they want. That was Albert Pike's plan, right? Yeah, was to have the nihilists go against the Christians and both be defeated, so that the uh, the true light of Lucifer could rise. Like you, you can't make like, I can't say it enough. There's these. When does coincidence stop being coincidence <laughs> and become a pattern? Yeah. Seriously, I, you know. And look, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm really not. I had a family member recently tell me that I was telling them about this show, and they were like, "I just, they were like, I don't understand." You know, um, you can't really prove a lot of this stuff. And they said, and personally, I would be convicted and. You know, it just, it seems like there could be more important things to talk about for the kingdom of God and that this is kind of a waste of time. And I was like, you want to talk about a waste of time? Um, where in the Bible does it say we're supposed to meet in a building that's owned by the government for half a day and we just waste the day away? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. when I told my wife, I said that she was like, dog. <laughs> um, but this is what I'm trying to get people to realize is that, so Ephesians 5, tells us to have not fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I don't think people realize that the word reprove there means to expose, hmm. to shed light on, to correct it. You can't correct it unless you expose it, right? Exactly. Um, but here's the thing, and this is like, I get so sick of it because I'm always hearing Christians say, and I believe this, so let me clarify that. Um, but they're always saying if it just saves one soul, it's worth it. And so how can anything that could help one person out and put them on the right path be a waste of time? Yeah. It makes no sense at all. You know how many people this could save? Cause people don't realize like stuff like this, when you follow people like Franklin Graham and Billy Graham, they're leading you straight to hell. Mm -hmm. And so for us to not expose that, for us not to expose the fact that some of the most popular movies right now are literally making disciples of Aleister Crowley. Well, whoever sees those things and we didn't warn them, their blood is on our hands. Yeah. You know, it's just, that should terrify anybody. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if you're sitting in a church for half a day on Sunday and you think you're doing something for the kingdom of God, You've got a rude awakening coming yeah. because you are not doing jack, you know what, for anybody no. except yourself. You are making yourself feel good by playing church, mm -hmm. and you need to get your big boy britches or your big girl britches on, and you need to get busy because you're not doing anything. Yeah, you're Jesus wasting your about, life um, away. Lukewarm Christians, you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, you, if you lose your salt, he's going to spit you out, plain and simple. And uh, what that means is, like, you should be out. What was Jesus, though? Did he hang around the, the temples all day? No, he was out in the midst of sinners, out in the midst of the world, bringing witness and light to the people. What good is being salt and uh, light of the earth <coughs> if you're stuck in a church with a fellow believers? Yeah, you're useless, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, it's okay to have some fellowship, whatever. But if you're around believers all the time, and that's why when we uh, have people... Um, when they call in and everything, I'll say, uh, they talk about that. It's like, oh, well, I feel so alone. Yeah, because the reason why I feel alone, because um, if we all lived in one city together, we'd be useless for God. You know what I mean? That's why he scatters his remnant about so we could be the light and salt of the earth, like lighthouses, for example, right? If we put all the lighthouses in the world on one island, right, what good are they? 
It'll be good for that one island, just about it, but it won't be good for the world. Ships will be crashing into um, shores all the time, you know? So we need to be those lighthouses scattered about. Yeah, it's lonely on a whole, but yet we're all part of one big organization, um, you know, under God. Uh, we got to be those lighthouses to protect and, you know, warn people, hey, listen, there's uh, there's rocks over here. Don't come flying over here with your boat, you know? Uh, same thing with, you know, with the, the ministry here, you know what I mean? So this way I expose the stuff again. I got a few more slides if uh, you don't mind. Do oh, you want to throw out? Yeah, quick? that. So that that that's it for me. So. Right. Yeah, and please feel free to jump in too, man. So um, we got to have some more uh, symbolism because I know a lot of people like this stuff. But uh, Trey already covered the Gmail thing, and uh, you know it's a Masonic apron logo, and that's what one of the that's what from the Blue Lodge. That's what a Masonic apron looks like, and normally too they're made out of lambskin. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into that some other time when you if you watch our shows on Masonic uh, stuff, and then uh, you know the logo of the show today, you know that disgusting logo with the OCNI. and I. You know what I mean? And we use that for a reason, okay? Because we're exposing it. Because that's like the king symbol, if you will. Oops, hold on a second. I think I knocked out Trey. My things are acting up today. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know if, uh, what's going on. Keep that getting... that wasn't you. I accidentally signed out of my Google account. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... My um. Bad. The king symbol, basically. The all CNI, you know what I mean? And uh, so you see this on the dollar bill. We did a whole uh, documentary on this, man. Uh, everybody told us, oh, that's the eye of God because the dollar bill says, in God we trust. No, that's not the eye of God. There's a thousand points of illumination around it. That's eye of their God, not the God of the Bible, their God. You know what I mean? And, if, and then you get told, oh, it's the eye of uh, Horus. No, I'm sorry, the eye of Providence. Then the eye of Horus, no, it's actually the eye of Lucifer, God. I mean, I'm their God. I mean, I'm getting confused. Yeah, it's the eye of their God, Satan, plain and simple, bottom line. Lucifer, the light bearer, you know, and uh, and uh, you see this everywhere. You know what I mean? Freemasons, uh, that's uh, one of the king symbols. CBS News, yeah, you know, CBS News, the eyeball there. That's all their logos. You know what I mean? And then we get into the peace sign. And uh, the peace sign, everybody thinks, oh, it's so cool. And this is where this came out in the 60s and all that, too. It was with the whole Kabbalah movement. You know, the flower power. The flower power, the peace movement, all that. All that was hijacked by the whole movement by the Kabbalists to inject that crap into there. So, uh, you see, that, well, what does it mean? Does it really mean peace? No, because if you actually have the origin of the symbol, goes back to Nero, the emperor of Rome. He made this uh, peace, so-called peace symbol is a hatred of Christ. It represents Christ being crucified upside down on the cross. It's a hatred of Christ. That's what that symbol stands for. That was created by Nero, and people use it today as a peace sign. And uh, this, uh, this is Richard Nixon, President Nixon. He was in, There was this famous thing. He always used to do up the double peace signs, right? Now, he was in Germany, right? He made this awesome speech in Germany. Everybody's applauding him. So he throws up the double peace symbol. Now, what happened was, uh, I don't know if you can find a video, too. He's in Germany. He throws up double peace, the deuces up there. And everybody started booing the hell out of him. Like, well, he's like, what the hell? You know, nobody was understood. Why are they booing him? Because in Germany, it's like somebody, you know, flipping some, you know, it's like flipping you off or giving you the evil lie. Because in Germany, they know it means Vav. You know what I mean? We're going to get to that in a second here. And, um, yeah, it's invoking the beast, plain and simple. And, uh, and uh, the peace symbol is invoking the beast. It's a uh, Hebrew letter Vav, you know what I mean? And uh, so they knew that. And, uh, the, again, in Hebrew alphabet, Vav. And then, then you got Mr. Spock's. Uh, now, mind you, check this out, right? Uh, Larry Nimoy, the, he was um, played the character Spock, right? He was an uh, open Kabbalist. Now, he's the one who went to the producers and said, we're going to do this in the movies. They didn't have that in script. He did that. And if you actually watch the creation of Star, Star Trek, I love this series, to be honest with you. But um, uh, he did that. Okay, he, he is the one to come up with the idea to put that into the movie. Uh, the Vulcan thing and everything else. And, uh, you know, V stands for Vulcan. No, that's not what it meant. In Kabbalah, you're invoking the beast. Literally. Uh, it's the same thing as doing the peace symbol, but that's in the Kabbalah. You know what I mean? The hand gesture, you know? And you see um, the V kind of on um console formulations we um, logo, and that's uh, Napoleon Bonaparte on the white horse. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte also symbolizes the white horse in the apocalypse. You know what I mean? And that's Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, by the way, yep. that that V sign that you're doing, yep, that's also um, if you connect two of those, that's a Masonic handshake. 
Oh, yeah, when they shake the hands like that, too. Yep, they shake hands like that. It's the most uncomfortable handshake in the world. Yeah, um, well, if you study your handshakes and tokens, they call them, um, Masons do certain things, you know, to signify to somebody else. In other words, if they're in court, and uh, if they're being held on trial or something like that, and uh, they'll do some kind of a sim seal up, symbol, the way they stand and everything else, um, to let the judge know if the judge is a mason. You know, they'll say, are you a traveling man? And they'll say, yeah, I've been to the east and back, whatever. It's to let them know, because in the Masonic Brotherhood, they can't, they're not allowed to go against each other. You know what I mean? So if you get pulled over by a cop and you're like holding your hand like a certain way, the cop sees it and he's like, oh, all right. Then he asks you that question, the travel man, and then all of a sudden he lets you go off the ticket. You know, oh, I'm sorry, whatever the case. But yeah, there's so much involved with that. But, um, and that's Napoleon Bonaparte on the horse. And that happens to be the, the con now the constant foreign relations guys, um, the Constitutional Relations is the political group, literally, of the Illuminati. Uh, plain and simple. They're the political aspect of the Illuminati to create a one-world government. Plain and simple. And uh, they are created by David Rockefeller. And it's a big news of Binsky. I hope I didn't butcher his name, but I don't really care because the guy's an evil man. They created the Constitutional Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission. Now, the Trilateral Commission, I don't know if I had that symbol up too, but anyway, it's a, a triad. You know what I mean? Symbolizes 666. But yeah. It's not a coincidence they use certain things for the logos. Uh, the white man and a horse, the apocalypse. You know what I mean? And uh, it also represents Napoleon Bonaparte. You know what I mean? During uh, the French Revolution and all that. And, um, and if you read the horse to behold the white horse, it talks about this as well. And uh, so I want a couple other things too I want to throw up here. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we got there's so many symbols, like I said, we could be here all night. Uh, two books I recommend, and I know Trey's going to recommend some more books too. Uh, but if you get a chance, uh, God rest his soul, uh, Pastor Tex Mars, he come out with this awesome, this is a thick, thick textbook manual. I mean, it's huge. It's a big book. You know what I mean? It's full of symbols. And they tell you what they mean and also the biblical scriptures that go along with them and everything else. This thing is jam-packed, okay? You read this book, I'm telling you right now. Um when the Bible says who has I let see and all that, you drive down uh, the, the road, right? You go to, uh, everybody goes by, um, you know, there's roads all the time, has stores, like every store known to man on the roads, strip malls and everything else, right? You see all these logos for the stores, right? You go, How many times you've been down that road? Millions of times, right? Read this book, right? Then drive down the same road, and I'm telling you, it's going to be like the first time driving down there because you're going to be like, you're going to be seeing what these symbols really mean. You're going to be like, what the hell? I, you know, you're going to be stunned of what these symbols really mean. They put them right on corporate logos, especially. You know what I mean? You're going to be driving down the road like, you know, just like seeing the world for the first time. Literally, for what what it, what it really is. It's pure truth and evil, man. And you got to see stars and triangles everywhere. I'm telling you, once you open your eyes to this stuff, guys, there's no going back. You know what I mean? Am I, is my slides frozen? Oh, I'm sorry. I was on the wrong one. All right. And there's the other book here uh, by uh, Kathy Burns. It's uh, Masonic Occult Symbols Illustrated. Uh, me and David Carrico has got this book. And uh, yeah, this book is jam-packed. Hundreds of pages, uh, 728 illustrations of every symbol you could ma possibly imagine and what the esoteric meanings of those symbols are. Yeah, I mean, this thing is jam-packed. I mean, the Eye of Ra and all that stuff, the Eye of Horus. You know, everything we talked about. And, um, you know, like I said, we could be here for hours talking about uh, these symbols and what they mean and everything else. And me, I years ago, I didn't know any better. I got this on my arm because I'm a pro wrestler. And my name is Bionic Dan Bedunn. So I got this tattoo. It's, uh, the biohazard tattoo, if I could get it out. I got it on my arm because I thought... It'd be a cool logo to adopt that biohazard logo into my thing, not knowing the esoteric meaning of it. It's the unholy trinity. You know what I mean? It's a pagan unholy trinity, if you will. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And now one last thing too. Um, here, when we talk about symbols and being injected, and you guys already seen what the pillars of Jackson and Boaz and the hand gestures and all that. Well, we didn't even cover that actually. But yeah, um, the woman who made this, the I love you. It was actually a. Uh, uh, um, uh, like a practice of Satanist or something like that. It means I love Satan. And uh, I know uh, in Texas, they, this is popular in Texas. So if you see somebody in Texas doing this, it might not, most of the time, it doesn't mean they worship Satan. It's uh, the bullhorns, they call them. It's a team in Texas. They take football seriously. It's football is gospel in Texas. So if you see a Texan going like this, yeah, they're not 
invoking Satan. That you know that they are, but they don't know the better. You know they're actually invoking the Texas uh, Longhorns. The yeah, it's the Longhorns. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, uh, my I was over my friend's house, and uh, they got a DVR because I was able to go back and uh, take a picture of this. Um, I was you know I'm talking to him, and uh, off the corner of my eye, uh, his daughter's watching Disney Plus, or uh, whatever it was Disney uh, Digital, whatever the heck it was, and um, in the middle of the shows, right? If in other words, if the show stops before the town allowed to the, for the next show, they'll show mini cartoons to make up for the time or commercials, right? So one of the mini commercials, right? It was uh, Mickey Mouse on a motorcycle. He's on this little uh, moped, and he come. He's got to get to work or something, and he goes to the city. There's traffic everywhere, so he decides to go roof hopping on his on his motorbike. And as he's going roof hopping, right, he gets on. Is this big cathedral church, right? And um, and he jumps off the roof of that, right, with the motorcycle, and it shows the back view as he's going, right? And this is, and I, this caught me as I'm talking to my friend, and I had to interrupt him. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, let me you know, rewind that for a minute. This caught me. This was only literally a second, and this caught me right off my eye. Because, like I said, once you open your eyes to symbolism, guys, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. I, never in the world I would have even seen that or even known about this if I had not had my eyes open. I took a screenshot of that. And I don't know if you can see that, Trey. But that's uh, Mickey Mouse riding off a roof of that church, right? It was a so-called church, right? You got the two pillars here of uh, Josh and Boaz. The all seeing eye. You got a bunch of gargoyles and demons holding up the Satan sign. How about that? That's Disney. Uh, was it Disney? Uh... Is that on Disney Plus? The Disney Channel. Yeah. That See, that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, and, then, and, you, and again, it's, uh, it was only like a split second or so. I, I froze the D, on the DVR and I took the picture. And uh, I'm like, wow, right in your face. Yep. Bunch of demons partying. And as I all see an eye in it, uh, you can see it, all this, all the symbolism in it. All the little demons up on top of the roof uh, and the pillars there of Josh and Boaz. You know what I mean? And it's and the same thing. The Masonic temples are no like identical almost. You know what I mean? And uh, it's it's so crazy when you immerse yourself into symbolism. And again, uh, you know, I tell you, you know, make sure you're caught up with the Bible because it will become overwhelming. I'm telling you, especially if you read these books. Uh, text Mars himself says that. You know what I mean? Make sure you caught up. That's why he puts tons of scripture in there. Because it, it, it'll, like um, some people read this book and uh, these other books and they got so wrapped up in that they literally lost their mind. You know what I mean? Because when you drive down the road, you see a whole new world that you've never seen before. It sticks out like a sore thumb. And uh, you can, and you'd be going out with your family, um, heading to the beach, whatever. You go buy something, bam. You know what I mean? Like It just sticks right out and grabs you, you know? And a whole new world that you've never seen before. You're actually see, starting to see which... Um, once again, it relates to these verses that we started the show with, where Jesus is talking about, you know, I mean, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things that you don't hear, and they heard them, not heard them, I mean, which means, like, even this goes into the music, too. Like, uh, when you hear, like, my my girl, uh, she's, you know, she's just a regular person, you know what I mean? She doesn't know any of this stuff. She was listening to Katy Perry, Dark Horse, right? And, uh, and I'm like... Hun, I said, do you, do, you, do you hear the lyrics? And she's singing. She knows the song by heart. I was like, did you hear what you just said? Uh, she goes, what do you talk about? Uh, yeah, I know the song. Why? So what? I'm like, go read the lyrics without the music. Read the lyrics and tell me what they say. You know what I mean? She's reading the lyrics and it's about, uh, she's asking these extraterrestrials. And if you watch the mu music video, extraterrestrials to come into her. Sexual term come into her to, you know, what I mean, to uh, so she could have these babies. That's again, as the days of Noah, Jesus says it'll be like that in a lot of days. The fallen angels, literally, the Bible says they came into the daughters of men, and I'm not being perverted because this is what the Bible says. They came into the daughters of men, and they bore uh, the woman bore children unto them. They were men of renown and Nephilim. And the same thing today, and uh, Alistair Crowley pointed out too. Uh, this is a famous quote from him uh, talking about these things, right? These demonic beings and all that. He goes, today they're known as demons and angels. Tomorrow they're going to be known as something else. And that tomorrow is now aliens and UFOs, which we did a lot of shows on. And the world knows them today as aliens and UFOs. 
And they say, well, even the ancient alien show that brings these things up. Uh, and it's all it's all connected, you know what I mean? But they're actually uh, unclean spirits, as the Bible says. You know what I mean? But um, not when you hear and see, okay? Ask Lord tonight when you go, when you go uh, before you go to bed, pray. Ask the Lord, okay, if you, to give you, you gotta say, to ask him, that's what I did years ago. It was amazing. It's like, I have an eye, let me see, I have an ear, let me hear. And uh, I don't mean to take up too much more time, guys. Uh, but um, this is a good testimony. And um, years ago, uh, it's just like something was, no not to sound like I'm from the Matrix or something, because it does sound like that, you know what I mean? Because when I seen the Matrix movie, it actually startled me, because it was like very similar. Uh, for years, I there was something always grabbing at me. It's like I felt there was something wrong with the world. I could not put my finger on it. Could not do it. And I'm like, what the hell? You feel it. Every fiber of your soul, there's something wrong with something. And then one day, I'm like, and I'm working third shift security. And, uh, you know, one day I'm just like, I prayed to God. To, God's like, I know you're trying to tell me something. And it was a deep prayer, you know. Uh, I know you're trying to tell me something. And I say, your scripture says, he has I let him see and he has ear, let him hear. I want to see and I want to hear. What are you trying to tell me? Went to sleep that next day and all that, and uh, for the weeks on end, just getting like my. It felt like somebody plugged something in my head, like in the Matrix, uploading information that I never even thought of, heard, or seen before, you know? And if you think I'm a bad speaker now, man, I was horrible. I couldn't even read out loud to save my life. And all of a sudden, I had this knowledge, and um, this, you know, my IQ went up so incredible. I had this knowledge to do this stuff. Then the radio show just literally fell in my lap, and everything came along with it. And there we are today, you know? But, uh, the information I was getting uh, uploaded into my head. And, I mean, I kept praying, too, if, to make sure it's of God, you know. And um, I started learning this stuff, you know what I mean. And they directed me to resources. I not even know what I was doing. Sometimes I was researching stuff. I had no clue why I was researching it. Just doing it. Something told me I had to research this, and that's it. Then later on, it made sense and everything else. And uh, so it took a while, about six months or so. And I woke up every day with migraine headaches. It was horrible. My eyes hurt and everything else. And... Um, but I had so much information, I, I just wanted to tell the world, you know what I mean? Then it's, there was something in your gut that was, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like butterflies when you meet your first love, you know, that kind of butterflies feeling. It was something like that. When you spoke it, you felt it. So it was like that righteous fire in you, know, that spirit fire that's like, let's get this out there. When I got on the radio, I was all over the mic for hours on end, just getting information out, exposing evil, and that you felt that, you know what I mean, the butterflies, but in a good way, you know, it's a righteous fire, you know, and uh, and um, the information coming from me was from, you know, God, and uh, so uh, that's, you know, that's why I recommend people to ask him because he's, you know, asking you shall receive, you know what I mean, and if it's his for will, you know, and uh, it does fulfill his will, and, you know, he who has the LMC, who has the ILMC. You know, ask to see and ask to hear. So when you hear these songs come on the radio or whatever the case, you can hear it. You know, the movies, you can hear and see exactly what they're doing. I pick the stuff out. I'm sitting in the movie, and I'm like, boom, 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 picking stuff out, you know, left and right in the movie. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the movie Ghostbusters, I think I was talking to Trey about this. I don't know how many times I used to be a big ghost hunting fan. Yeah, I was a ghost hunter for 20 years, you know. And Ghostbusters was my absolute favorite movie at the time for a while. I knew the uh, movie from word to word. Then when I learned symbolism and everything else, and, uh, you know, about the occult and all this garbage and everything else, I when I watched the first Ghostbusters, I was like, what the hell? It was like watching it for the first time because I seen what the imagery was portraying, you know what I mean? Why they used that particular building was the master building in New York City. It was by um, uh, Nicholas Rorick. That's a whole new story altogether, but he built that building for specific spiritual reasons, you know what I mean? And they mention it kind of a little bit in the movie, you know what I mean? Because they love doing that stuff, you know what I mean? And I'm seeing all the stuff, the symbols, uh, it, the things that's saying in the movie and all that stuff. This is pure occultism. I'm like, what the hell? You know what I mean? And uh, so I, I know you could relate to that, Trey, you know. I think yeah. I was try talking to you about that when you talk about the Ghostbusters. Yeah, see, I see. I grew up I grew up a Ghostbusters fanatic. Matter of fact, I grew up in the era where Ghostbusters still had an attraction at Universal Studios. And, I mean, I was going in there at like two or three years old. You know, I mean, that's how I was raised up on it, you know. And, 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 and you know, it's not just – it's – it's so many. Like, I grew up a big fan of King Arthur, the Sword in the Stone, all of that. And you just, you go back and you see all this stuff. Like me, I'm still, like, you know, I love Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, I've still got all the books and all of that. But when you understand that 
Tolkien was not only a Catholic, but he was friends with Jesuits. You know, you look and you see all this stuff, and it's just amazing. Like, I just thought, I remember reading Lord of the Rings as a teenager being, I wish I could write something this good, this epic, this great to make people, you know, give place, give people a place to get away. I never realized that, you know, you either write stuff because God wants you to write it or you write stuff because Satan wants you to write it. There is no in between. Yeah. It's kind of like Yoda said, you know, do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, but it's, instead of that, it's, you know, you're either one or the other. There's no middle ground, but. Absolutely. Well, Trey, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, normally we take phone calls, but um, I don't know what the heck's going on with this thing. My, uh, the Magic Jack program keeps coming on and off. I think uh situation with the USB port's loose again, whatever. Um, that's why I, there's a little problems earlier. But um, And plus it's late too, so um, I promise we'll take phone calls next week, guys, and we'll be back on YouTube. And this show here, guys, on June 10th, the Friday, uh, well, Saturday, going to Saturday, the special one, we're going to re-broadcast uh, this June 10th because I'm going on a, vac a little vacation for the wife's birthday and everything else. So this will be re-premiered uh, premiered on our YouTube channel in two weeks. Next week we got, um, I think, um, Emily's coming on, I believe, next week uh so it's gonna be pretty cool and uh and again we're gonna have trey harris back on because we've got so many ideas for shows and um i think it's awesome stuff man and so check out his show coursecorrectionradio.com and uh any closing uh comments bro um i mean as always guys thank you for sticking with us into the wee midnight at like the wee hours of the morning <laughs> um and look, just look, this is what I always want to let people know is that this is something as long as you're aware of it and you can, you know, help people. This is all of this. It's a tool, you know, it's it's, you know, it's just some bait in your tackle box as a fisher of men. You know, there's no I love the way you say it, Dan, when you're talking about how you can get sucked into the abyss. I can't tell you how many times. I sometimes feel my feet slipping into it and mm -hmm. I have to be very intentional about, you know, praying and deliverance and things like that, you know. So guys, always remember that, you know, obviously Jesus comes first, your relationship with him, and make sure you guys stay in the word, especially the way the world is going now. But just know that no matter what, whether people think what you look into is a waste of time or, you know, that there's no real use for it. Just know that you've always got a family and a community here with us. Absolutely. And uh, very important stuff, man. So, guys, um, thank you so much, Trey. And check out Trey Harris out, guys. CourseCorrectionRadio.com. So, guys, we got a PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. Uh, three different ways if you want to financially help support this ministry. Because uh, it pays for the lights in the building. pays for the streaming service. pays for the rent in the studio here. All that good stuff. But more important, guys, just pray for us. And like, share, and subscribe. And I know either way, the Father will help us. And um, again, I want a sh special shout out to our brothers and sisters over at NIUC TV, guys. Uh, tomorrow night, well, tonight technically, uh, David Carrico and John Powell. Founders. And when you listen to this on YouTube on June 10th, um, same thing. Um, you got the Midnight Ride coming up at 11 p.m. Eastern. The link is in the description. Trey's link is in the description as well, uh, right toward the bottom there, so it's easy to find. And uh, also, guys, support Nice TV. And thank you to our sponsors, Joshua's Leather Company. It's where your custom leather project becomes a reality. Joshua'sLeather.com and CascadiaCutlery.com. And a special shout out to um, uh, brothers and sisters over at uh, SugarAndSpiceSoaps.com. And once again, Annie from uh, ShakeAndWakeRadio.com. Thank you so much for carrying me in our trade show. We highly appreciate it. Trust us. And uh, so that being said, guys, uh, we uh, gotta roll out of here. And I apologize because normally we take phone calls, and uh, I feel bad. Uh, because I know a lot of people love to call in on the show and everything else. So, uh, but next week we'll do that. And because uh, we had a, we got suspended from YouTube and all that, and we obviously we got a larger audience on YouTube. So that's why I've got to re premiere this in two weeks on the YouTube channel. So anyway, guys, uh, love you all. God bless. Shalom. And remember, you are the resistance. Thank you for supporting TruthRadioShow.com in our continuous fight against the New World Order. If you want to donate and help contribute toward our daily news show, 
in our spiritual warfare ministries. Contribute any amount to the following links in the description. That's our PayPal, our Venmo, or our Cash App. Or just simply take out your camera and scan the code bars on the screen. And we thank you once again for help supporting the fight against the New World Order. And remember, you are the resistance. God bless. Declaring war on the New World Order, truthradioshow.com.